Alrighty. Hello, everyone watching at home. I am Cole Wolfron, and welcome to the first episode of Realms of Alavar. Almost said my own world wrong. <laughs> A new D&D series I am going to be doing several campaigns of, as well as some other DMs will be, uh, in my homebrew world, which you may have seen on Chronicles of Rivera. My dog is going to be barking all night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And today we are entering a new campaign with it's our level building. with our level yes. thirteen party. She can be Brutus; it's fine. With our level thirteen party, yes, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> as we begin this journey of Shadows of the Chasm. Now, first, I'm going to go around the virtual table and have everyone introduce themselves and say who they're playing without revealing too much. Uh, first up is uh, the God of Strength himself. Hey, Christian Carlson, would you mind? Hi, what's up, guys? I'm Christian Carlson. I'll be playing uh, Draco. He's a super fun uh, Eldarian elf, autumn themed. Lots of fun. He's a good time. Uh, he's got his friend Brutus, so I think you guys are going to enjoy Draco. But yeah, this, uh, that's, that's my vibe. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Wonderful. We love it. We love to see it. Uh, dude, bro, Shaggy, and Scooby at it again. <laughs> yes. Uh, Did you do it for a Brutus snack? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, we'll get into that later. Uh, Jake! If you've been on my I, channel, you've seen him before. <laughs> hi, it's me again. Uh, I'm uh, Jake, or Jacob, your choice. Uh, I'm going to be playing uh, Aaron Kaliakin, a, uh, an elf uh, Eldritch Knight rogue. Uh, or not Eldritch Knight, Arcane Archer. That's it. Good start. Uh, yeah, just a, just a very polite little twink. <laughs> Listen, saying the words polite little twink to anyone who's read Berserk gives us warning signs. <laughs> well, I haven't. <laughs> I like how the other three guys in the chat were the only ones who went, hmm. <laughs> no uh, idea. Next up, uh, someone else you've seen a million times if you've ever watched any of my content Storm. Who could that be? Me. <laughs> um, I'm Storm. <laughs> Goodbye. Storm Sorceress on like all of my socials. I will be playing Helia, who is a Moth Bay of the Spring Court um, Light Cleric. The magic. And next, uh, uh, one of the... Well, Christian is also newbie to the channel, but the, the other three... and Well, the only other newbie to my channel is um, our dear friend Whiskey. Hello. Uh, good to be here. This is fun, exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll be playing as Uruk No Name. He believes that's his name. Yes. He also believes he's a paladin. But he's not. We'll have to get into that in the campaign. Next, uh, <laughs> the many, many comments on one of my other campaigns about who the heck is Poe and why are they evil. Uh, here is Sid the player for that character playing someone completely different. Say hello, Cindy. Yes, I am Cindy Salem. Super happy to be here, too. Um, uh, probably Cindy Salem on all social media. I will be playing Wendy Warhol, uh, a tiefling artisan um, way of the elements. Monk. So um, he's, he's going to bring all the sass. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I don't be too obnoxious. <laughs> Uh, I'm expecting so much obnoxiousness, and it's welcomed. And last, we have Val. It is I. Hi there, uh, I'm Val, or Val the Fent Escapist on all social media. I will be playing Minithial Umbra, but uh, you can call her L. She's a high elf sorceress, and uh, she's a little weird. You know, uh, kind of like a Luna Lovegood type of girl, uh, and she likes to uh, keep to herself. Not that she's not friendly, but she just doesn't like to make friends too much. That's all I'm gonna say for now. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Hmm. Well, so to set the stage, and obviously you all know who I am if you're at this channel, otherwise if you just stumbled upon it, I am Cole Wolfram. I am the, going to be the game master for these folks. Um, and this is set on the continent of Rivera exactly one year before the events of Chronicles of Rivera. So before the big civil war, before the world-ending catastrophes, we're going to get into how some of that maybe started. 
We are in the Empire of Kimura. In the now cap- I'm concerned. <laughs> in the capital of Brimstone. Listen, you're the one who made a moth fae who's interested in the light elves. <laughs> we accidentally Look. start the end of the world. It's That's our bad, right? That's our bad. So we'll fix it later, it's fine. <laughs> Making messes for your other characters to clean up. The Storm Sorcerer is special on this channel. <laughs> so, so the Bobs, you guys are in the city of Brimstone, the bustling capital in the Empire of Kimura, the country where some of you are not really a common sight, especially for Draco, Helia, and Ulrich. Not very often you see Fey or humans in this kingdom at all, in this empire. Wendy's probably the most seen being a tiefling as this empire is run by tieflings and dragonborn. So even you, the elves among you, are in the minority of the people around here. And you wake up the next morning from your advent, from your first meeting with the rest of your companions. And you come downstairs and Ulrich has already made a delicious breakfast for everyone. Good morning, everyone. I, I want us to get a good start on our adventure. So I made a, a plate full of uh, uh, eggs, and there's bacon, and there's link sausages. Uh, I put some aside for Draco and Brutus. You, you know, Brutus is, you know, big big guy, so, you know, he's going to need a lot of energy. Um, there's also vegetarian, so I put together a spring mix, uh, and I added uh, rosemary and, and some other herbs to, like, make it a very dense salad. And with that, could you describe Ulrich, please? Describe what? Describe Ulrich. Oh, so Ulrich is a fairly uh, young, new, fresh-faced adventurer. Um, 5'7", still kind of thin and lanky. He looks like he's been working out a lot. Simply because, you know, cooking can be strenuous if you have to do everything by hand without using magic. And then, you know, just, you know, he, he's more akin to being in the forest and in the wilds than in the cities. So something like that, you know, you're either in shape or you're dead. <laughs> That's very fair. So as you all come down, uh, Brutus, the bronze wormling, just walks up and immediately just goes, I love this dude so much. And just starts eating the bacon. Just, <laughs> just. Oh, and he's just like, bro, if we, Draco, we need to make sure nothing happens to this little guy, because if anything does, I'm going to kill you, man. I'm just saying. If something happens to him, bro, something's already happened to me, so you won't have to kill me. Okay? Oh, man, that I'll makes it worse. Ulrich is. That makes it worse, because okay? then i got to avenge both and you of you, bro. Too. Look, look oh. at me. Eyes on me, oh. Brutus. Eyes oh. on me. We'll both be gone if Ulrich's gone. You feel me? This is a this is a vow. This is a blood oath to protect Shit. Ulrich with our lives. You feel me? And Brutus takes level of paladin. Right, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it takes us out. Um, but listen, Brutus, for real, you, you can't eat all the food. You, the bacon's yours. You can't eat all of it. Though, but, okay? but at least like you. Because if I don't have energy, what are we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? That just feels wrong. Right? This, you gotta this... leave some for me. Fine. He leaves four specific strips, slides them with his nose over to you. Eats the other ten. Yes. All right. I'm gonna just walk over uh, to Ulrich and I'm gonna be like, "Thank you," and then just start immediately <laughs> chowing down, looking around, Aww. waiting for everybody else to come down. I think that for um, for Draco, who does not sleep, he just sort of like meditates. Uh, the night was a moment for him to just sort of like center before we got into everything. Uh, so coming down to like breakfast feels like for him the cap on that meditation like all of the things that he felt that he discovered have been realized in the bacon um, no. so this is a good moment this is a good moment oh there's also pancakes i forgot to mention pancakes. are you kidding me yes no. i'm gonna go straight for the pancakes and uh what does draco look like or draco whichever draco Draco is a, he's about six foot one. He's decently broad and he's toned muscle. I think that he's got sort of a, a, a dark olive skin tone that seems to sort of like swirl with undertones of orange. I think that it's also like this leafy sort of like decor 
Horum almost seems to kind of follow him. It changes form as he moves with leaves sort of falling off, but they seem to come back occasionally. But most of it is on his shoulders and sort of like in his hair. And the leaves at this moment are all those autumnal colors, the bright oranges and yellows and reds. And uh, he's also got these sort of like uh, tattoos that sort of go up his arms and across his chest. At the moment, he seems to be wearing uh, just sort of like these very nice like leather pants, belt. He's got like some uh, boots on, but he's got a bag which seems to have a lot more of like uh, his armor and gear in it. Because other than that, he's just rocking it shirtless at the moment. Um, He's got like messy sort of dark black hair. Uh, that seems always unkempt, but also slightly stylish. Um, <laughs> very mischievous looking, but handsome features. He's got bright purple eyes, uh, very clean shaven face. Uh, and it feels like it's 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 like the edges of his mouth are always sort of curling in a smirk. Like he's in on a joke that you're not quite in on, but you want to be in on. Uh, and that's that's the look you get as he sort of like sprints over to find the pancakes. All right, and before we introduce other characters, one thing I forgot to mention, and this will date the video. Uh, this video is not dedicated, but rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Um, um, yeah, just, uh, man who made me a nerd. I would not be into fitness, cosplay, or anything nerdy without Dragon Ball Z. So without him, none of this would have happened. So rest in peace to the most influential man in, man- in anime history, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that. Mm. Truly accurate. And now Brutus Truly. will be as dumb as Goku to honor him. <laughs> yes. Oh no. Wow. We're both two have to go really in his no. I just need to make him sound like a bridged Goku now. <laughs> That's his canon voice now. <laughs> is a bridged Goku. So. I'm in. I love it. Now, next, before, before we have Eren come back from the archery range <laughs> and Wendy come down as well as Helia from their shared room up top, L, you are al- in the one room you request alone, and you wake from your trance to find the hand on locks on the inside almost completely destroyed, but they hung on barely. But there is a blood trail coming from the window. And there are several dead squirrels in your room. Oh my god. Okay. I uh, look around in horror, uh, and you said squirrels? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Because you're on the third floor, and there was a tree right outside your window. Okay, okay. Uh, I wake up, get undone from all my locks, and uh, run down to the squirrels and just hold them and start crying and saying, I'm sorry, frantically. Like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, and then I just let them go, and uh, I would try and go bury them outside, avoiding everybody else. Um, I would probably say that Draco and Brutus are too involved in the food to notice you walking out the front, probably. Um, I'd say that's so accurate. I'll try to sneak yeah. by. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this for we'll keep it quiet for now. Yeah, you go outside. You manage to bury them. I bury them, I say a little prayer, and uh, I go back to where everybody else is. The little twinge voice in your head just goes, "Ah, You're such a drama queen. And I just kind of roll my eyes and continue on with my day. At this moment, uh, Helia, you and Wendy are the only ones up in your room left. Everyone else has Mm -hmm. gone down, or Aaron, to the archery range. And... We'll go with you two first. You both wake up for the day. Yeah. Um, Helia probably is, um, like, <laughs> the glass is coming out. Um, like, packing everything very neatly um, up by her bed and kind of um, humming to herself, just kind of getting everything ready before she goes down um, to join the rest of the crew. Um, just like a light little tune. Um as she gets ready for the day. Wendy is definitely a little hungover, and 
not a morning person. Uh, and yeah, and if, if, if she's humming, he's like, oh my god. Please. Oh. I have not had my cough yet. I'm sorry, I didn't know I woke you. Um, I, I can be quiet if you need. I can yeah, get I you can. coffee if you want to. You would go get me coffee? Of course. I, mean, I won't say no to that. I mean, I I gotta do my meditation stuff anyway, so. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can go get it. Um, and uh, right up. You get your sleep, okay? Um, Beautiful. First. Why don't you give me some pancakes while you're up? <laughs> oh yeah, um, of course. First of. Uh, We'll go in order as they talk. Uh, Val, describe L for me, please. L. <laughs> Fair enough. For, for those of you, for those of you uh, listening and not watching, pink-haired high elf with black clothing. <laughs> yep, she likes to wear black clothing, and she prefers to wear pants rather than skirts and stuff like that because it's easier to move, and black is a bit slicker to you know roam around in shadows of the forest. And her eyes are red too, reddish. Reddish eyes. Helia. Mm -hmm. um, Helia is a um, moth face, so pure like alabaster white skin and hair, um, gold markings around her face, and little like almost gold freckles um, up and down her shoulders and back. Um, she's wearing light, flowy clothing. Um, like long like dress and skirt seems very like loose and comfortable um and has bright wings on her back that at the moment are almost kind of like a pre-dawn-esque color so like honestly probably close to my hair right now so like light blue pink soft oranges kind of mixed in just a very very faint glow to the wings themselves all right and wandy wandy is a silver white tiefling, um, about 5'9. He's dressed in mostly all white with some western flair, definitely wearing some leather chaps. Um, wears his sunglasses every morning before he wakes up because he's just real sleepy. He's like silver eyes. Um, yeah, no. Are we sure Thank that Wandi and Rusty aren't related? <laughs> <laughs> I will not. Healy is that. tiny too. Yeah. He is like five foot, five Rust, foot even. Rusty is a very short tiefling too, so. The bike. So, uh, Wandi, you are alone now as uh, Helia goes downstairs. And as you go downstairs, uh, Helia, Aaron also walks in. Probably still pretty sweaty from his archery training. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, Aaron comes in uh, kind of carrying uh, like the quiver and uh, a very, very fancy looking, obviously like magical bow, uh, but it's unstrung, just kind of carrying the, the quiver. Uh, uh, not shirtless, but like a really simple tunic. Definitely looks like after, because Aaron hit the archery range last night and then... <laughs> is also seemingly coming back from it this morning and may have also done, like, just a quick 5K. Uh, Awful. Kinda, Aaron, yeah. Aaron's that guy in the fitness world that walks up to bodybuilders and powerlifters and is like, oh, yeah, lifting weights is cool, but if you try <laughs> all <of> this... <laughs> Listen, one must respect all forms of, uh, of physical activity. You do. Because everybody chooses their path towards fitness and health. You won't catch me doing a 5K. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron also has I've a done one. 18. Jake doesn't. <laughs> so I can deadlift 700 pounds, but you won't see me run more than a mile ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aaron walks in, and at this point, I think right after, Elle would also walk back in. Uh, Helia, you walk down and see all of the food that Ulrich has made. Do you make all of this yourself? Yeah. That's amazing. Do you need help with anything? Um, dishes or anything uh, like that? Well, the people here at the tavern... I got it! Uh, buddy uh, is... The ogre yeah, the, buddy. The, 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 yeah, the tavern people said as long as they could have some, they could, like, finish washing up after us so we can leave as soon as we want. But uh, apart from that, you can help me by eating as much as you can. 
Of course, it looks wonderful. You did a great job. Um, I do need... Wandy wants to get... Uh, sorry, I heard an echo from myself and it glitched me, but... Um, want some? I'm going to bring them up. Uh, some coffee and pancakes, and then I'll be right back down. We'll find this exit eventually. I don't know where it is right now, but it'll be somewhere later. <laughs> um, but so it looks wonderful. I'll be right back down. I don't know Drinking where it is. Yeah, it's like gone. Mouth like full, it's just like... Um, yeah, no, you can, yeah, you can have some. Uh, and I just, like, back away, <laughs> hands up away from the pancake platter. Brutus uh, and at that is, point, does I'll, not I'll pull away. Up. He's like, mm. Brutus, buddy, you gotta, hey, you gotta, take any pink. Brutus. You, but, Brutus. Only if you, stop it. only if you steal some and put it in your pocket so I can have pocket bacon. Alright, can we, just give me a sec. I'll figure that out. I'll make that happen. Fine. Right now, otherwise, they're gonna. He pulls back and just. I'm gonna pull back. As, as I'm pulling back, I'm gonna turn and see uh, Aaron sort of coming in, and I just see the sweat and the the bow, the arrows, all the nine, and I'm like, "Whoa, respect." What were you out shooting arrows just now? Uh, yeah, no, I try to uh, practice uh, every night and every morning, and uh, just. Uh, you know, wake up early and try to get a good jump start on the day and, you know, probably not going to have time to uh, with, you know, meetings and everything. It's just something my father taught me to do. Um, breakfast! Respect. That's dope. Yeah, no, yeah, we got breakfast. We got, like, bacon and pancakes and stuff. So I tried to keep... Brutus is pretty hungry, so I tried to keep... Uh, yeah, but there's plenty left, obviously. Ulrich, Ulrich is an absolute G. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's all you. And I'm, I will spare like a glance toward L, but L, I think the last time that we spoke was sort of like a little bit to themselves. So I'm going to like glance over and see what their vibe is before I try and make any, uh, conversation. Um, L would just be kind of like sitting by herself, still shaken from what happened in the, in her room. Um, and kind of like looking around and uh, she'd lock eyes with uh, with Draco and just kind of like nod back at him and wait for his reaction as well. I think he'll just toss you a smile, but he's not going to say anything. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a furrow as he's like, okay. Um, and then I'm going to turn back to see what Healy is doing to kind of gauge how many pancakes are <laughs> being taken away. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try, um, mm, probably like persuading, um, your boy to give me pancakes. Just like, it's all right. I'm not going to take all of them. I just want to share with other people because they look so good he, that I want to bring them to other people. Roll me an animal handling check. <laughs> I don't think I'm good at that. Oh, plus five. Okay. I'd um, say it is wisdom, guys. so. Yeah, but I don't put it into. You you do also <laughs> see. Ten. Ten. He just. But then after, based on what Draco told him earlier, he looks up at Draco and telepathically. Do you promise there'll be pocket bacon? Promise. I promise. I got yes. you. You know I got you. Bruce. He just huffs you. and sits back on his butt and just lets Helia do whatever. You guys do also notice in the corner that there's another massive pile of pancakes that Buddy the Ogre is just <laughs> digging into. Ulrich made him his own batch of pancakes. And it's I as told you for the last time. And it's as tall as Brutus, and he just puts it all on one fork and just... I'll just take, like, <laughs> still, like... A... So that was good! Still looking the Drake in the eye, just take... Still smiling, too. Take two pancakes and some coffee and, like, flip back upstairs to get, mm. um, Wandy his, um, pancakes. So you walk in the room, and Wandy, what are you doing? Are you still just laying in bed? He is, like, sprawled out on the floor doing some weird yoga moves. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. It's a monk thing. Don't worry about it. I smell that coffee from here. He, like, just, like, rolls up. Of course. Yeah. Oh, 
I have it for you. Um, you take your time, dear. Um, I think everyone's just getting food, so, um, no pressure Amazing. at all. I bet it's loud down there. I'm just gonna take, yeah, I'm just gonna have my moment. You are quickly becoming my favorite person, Helia. <laughs> Bless you. You're wonderful, too. You have a good meditation. We'll see you later. Thank you. Stretching more weird. <laughs> 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 and I'll flip back down and go get some food for myself. Okay. It's at uh, this point that uh, Rusty Goodbush, the tan tiefling whose horns wrap around his head like a straw hat, smokes and go, snaps his suspenders and goes, Well, howdy, y'all. I uh, hope y'all had a good sleep here at Goodbush's Good Times, Good Eats, and Good Drinks. Um, we decided just to take all the names and put them together into one, and we'll just do all of the events here. Uh, so... Uh, oh, it looks like Ulrich made quite a bit of food, and he takes some bacon and eats it. <laughs> just goes, now, uh, your uh, liaison with Lady Bliss, Gareth, he said that you all have until noon, pulls out a little piece of paper, to get any equipment you might need with the money. Oh, and he hands you each bags of gold, and it's you each get a thousand now nice. until you get to the palace. And he goes, spend all the gold you can might need get equipment potions whatever and meet at noon at bliss manor in the upper city if the guy at the gate gives you trouble just tell him gareth said fuck off i don't think that's what you're supposed to say to lady edith's guards but i would no, just say, say gareth knows what he's talking about are you sure? I appreciate it, Rusty, but Gareth knows what he's Gareth knows what he's talking about. Okay, Gareth uh, always knows. All right. Well, I guess it's a new custom here. Well, the the Varger, as far as I can tell, tend to be keep to themselves and are they don't know courtesy. Let's call it social decorum. And uh, he, in particular, the only person he's nice to is anyone with the last name Bliss. <laughs> And the one lady, he's the, the one uh, bartender I have that he's sweet on. But other than that, he just kind of tends to be a jerk. But uh, I'm yeah, not going to spill the tea. I'm not going to sweet on. You got to tell us. You got to contractually tell us. You know that, right? If you're going to keep him from literally biting my arm off, then I will. Uh, he's a seven foot tall yeah, wolf man. <laughs> Listen, I got a dragon. Well, worm link, but you know, me and Brutus got you. Don't worry about it. Lisa, what's up? What's up? What's At this moment, well, you see a um, blonde elven bar tender walk out to get started of the day. She ties her hair up. She gets already goes, just kind of points. I'm just going to point to my head. Uh, <laughs> He's like, please do not tell head. Gareth you heard that from me. I cannot afford more damages. <laughs> Rusty, I never reveal a source. My lips are sealed. <sighs> He kind of looks you up and down, and he just goes, "Something tells me you try to, but you fail." <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Rusty. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Oh boy. Oh, well, anyway, uh, I gave you your gold. Um. Uh, also, uh, and he, he said, Helia, was it? Oh uh, yeah, that's me. That real fancy boy with the orange hair uh, told me to tell you thanks for the talk. He'll come back later. Of course. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I'm sure I'll see him later. Uh, he did just flat out disappear as soon as he told me, and I was real confused. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of weird things happening lately. I just talk it all up to the world going to do, shit. Do people not just... Teleport here? I mean, not really. Sometimes oh. I sometimes I do it by accident, and I don't really know what happens. I can't do no damn magic. Interesting. Well, yeah, no. Thank you for letting me know. And uh, Ulrich, uh, here you go. He gives you 20 gold. He goes, for your services, oh, this for, for feeding Buddy this morning. He was real tired, and so it's real hard to feed that boy. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Maybe uh, next time we can have the same deal. Uh, of course, if you feed, you, you know, it's real hard having an ogre for an adopted son, and he he boy he eats me out of house and home. But I love the boy to death. Can you believe that ogres grow that fast? He's only twelve. <laughs> he just walks back. 
And he goes, enjoy your meal, enjoy everything. If you need coffee or tea, let me know. Other than that, go up on your little adventures. All right. Have a good rest of your day. Will do. And then he walks up, chugs a basically pitcher of coffee, and walks back into the back. <laughs> oh, so, uh... I did just realize I never actually described Aaron's physical appearance. I, I was about him. to say that you did. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he's uh, he's an elf. He's like five foot flat, uh, very very lean, uh, very lean athletic build. But he's got very very yellow blonde, very flaxen hair, uh, kind of shaggy. It may have at one point been like a nice like you know like semi-long haircut but has since grown out and like some of it's pulled back uh and he's got kind of like soft uh almost like delicate uh features with almost like a his resting face is just kind of this like 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 almost like expectant kind of half smile like uh and then he has uh across one side of his face like pretty heavy like lightning scarring uh that based on like the kind of the tunic he's wearing now you can see like goes down like a hefty chunk of of one side of his body okay and he may bear a strong resemblance to... legally distinct to any nintendo character <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> but totally i'm not going to make a giant enemy with tan skin and red hair for him to fight <laughs> Who all Any reference? similarities to other uh, legal entities completely that, coincidental. Is that a reference to something? I'm not. I will fly not, to Boston. Not picking up I will fly to Boston. This... Give, slap you in the face and then give you a hug because if jokes I saw... on you. I don't live in Boston. Oh no, not Boston, Baltimore. <laughs> Wherever you live, I don't know. Good luck <laughs> finding him there. I know. <laughs> yeah, you're in Boston. Like, where is he? <laughs> Where a- is where is my fav one of my favorite dudes? I'm just standing in. Is that famous D and D TikToker Jacob and Nick Oland? <laughs> so back upstairs, Helia, you are alone in your in the room. You do your meditations, and not me. No, not Helia. Oh, uh, one day you do your meditations. In He'll live there in spirit. He is done with his meditations. He'll wander on down. Do you still have your shades on, or do you take them off now that you've had your coffee? Oh, he he still has them on. He that coffee's gonna take like a good hour to sit in. As Holy- Wendy is walking down the stairs, I'm gonna clog it as I'm like trying to use that as cover to sort of like shuffle some of the bacon into like a small pouch. And then I'm going to cover that up by, like, sort of big stretch, fall back into his seat, throw my boots up on a table. Oh, yeah, the whole nine. Uh, and then I'll even be like, Wendy, hey, glad you could join us. You sleep okay? You look great. Give me a your choice of sleight of hand or deception check. Probably better at deception being a charisma boy. <laughs> <laughs> so lightly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I get the feeling he's the type of paladin that is that put most of his points into persuasion and intimidation. <laughs> I absolutely did, but the dice like me a little bit today. That's a seventeen. Um, I don't think anyone else would really go. If anyone would like to, maybe see if they notice, they can give me um, perception checks. Oh, okay. I also got exactly a 17. So, Helia, you definitely notice him covering something up, but you don't really know why or what he's doing? They definitely talked that... about taking it in front of me, didn't they? Mm. Or was that all that in was, head? That was in his head. What? I couldn't... So you got... Sure half oh, of it to was clarify, out loud. you guys cannot hear Brutus talk unless he wants right. you to, and his external voice sounds very different than the goofy voice in his head. That's the voice that he feels comfortable using with his best buddy, Draco. For just waking up and not being a morning person, he rolled a nat 20, so... <laughs> so when do you... <laughs> just <laughs> he seems, for something to He happen. seems way too Wendy. enthusiastic for you to see you. Since y'all didn't really have much of a conversation the night before, he seems very enthusiastic. 
And then you see Bacon slide into his pouch. <laughs> he will not. He's going to keep note of that, but it has, yeah, does not care at all. All right. One day we'll remember <laughs> that. What'd you get, hey, Warwick? Like, pops up in the corner. He's like, is this, it's too, so dang loud in here. Ugh. Are y'all about wrapped up? I'm. You guys say, he says it's loud, but you guys are like, there's nobody in this tavern but you guys and Buddy. Nobody's being loud. It's actually pretty quiet and serene. (laughs) Oh, uh, Artisan. Breathing. Uh, You you said you're a vegetarian, so I made you the salad for breakfast. There you go. A breakfast salad. That's new. Um, Thank you. He like just takes it. After eating all those pancakes, it's like, ah. it turns like. We start uh, talking about vegetarianism. I like give a side eye to Brutus. I'm just like, I don't know. So I won't say anything, dude, but I'm gonna judge them internally. What use is there to life if you're not eating delicious meats off the bone? <laughs> this is Brutus's opinions, not Cole's. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm saying nothing out loud. I'm just like, just nodding along. <laughs> Now I know that I have I've already stretched my limits by trying to steal as much bacon as possible. <laughs> um, so I will sort of in that like relaxed hands behind the head pose with the boots up on the table, uh, sort of like glance around and then say, uh, "So we got a we got gold to spend. Did you guys have like a shopping list? Because I didn't really think we were gonna have time to shop first. I know no. exactly what I need. I've been I've been needing yeah. a new sword uh, for some time now. Hopefully, something a little better than I have. But uh, other than that, not particularly. I have many shop options for you guys. Option A: There is a blacksmith. First session, a shopping episode. Listen, I <laughs> want to make sure you guys are ready. Everyone who's played in my Death campaigns know how I do combat encounters. <laughs> <laughs> and I have fireball as a cleric. Good to know. I think I traumatized Cindy in the last game. <laughs> so she, they played with me. <laughs> it was an adventure. It was a good adventure. It's a learning adventure. <laughs> totally, totally. So the learning curve. It slopes up, yeah, right? It's yeah. a steep <laughs> slope up. They totally uh, picked a god to worship based on vibes. With And I was like, should I tell them that that's the main antagonist of this one shot? Nah, let's leave that a secret. <laughs> it's, all, it's all perspective. Listen. Yeah, right. <laughs> there was no other choice. Good and evil are just perspective, Anakin. Uh, from, a, from a certain point. I mean, me. you did look at the god of shadow and vampires, Caius, and go... Is it because he's hot? I gotta ask. Uh, there is no other option. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a huge turning point. If they're hot, well, if I, I, I'll, I'll send the, I'll send the, like I'll say, I'll say the, I'll send the Caius art in the chat, and you guys will be like, oh, yeah, I would do that too. <laughs> when I was I looking, yeah, right. God, I saw that, that and I went, "That's not rad." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, vampires, and they're hot. Like, yeah, sure, I'll sign an oath. Like, what's I mean, up? You know? hot vampires are kind of guaranteed, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, if you blend us, I don't know what this club is about, but I know who's gonna be here. (laughs) (laughs) So, you have there's a blacksmith you guys can go to, uh, some some called the Silver Scale Armory, run by a dragonborn. There is a potion shop, an apothecary. There is a clothing shop, a leather worker. There's plenty of things for you all to explore. Some of them I will come up with names on the fly. Ooh. <laughs> a Improv. black my mysterious orange potion. I'll sort of like drink that really quickly and then like put the stopper back in it, stuff it, and then uh almost as if to try and try and sort of cover that up immediately. I'm like Ulrich, you, you you said you knew what you needed. Where where are you trying to go? We're going to a blacksmith to get a sword and what do you need? Well, um We're all gonna be traveling together. We will have a lot of things. If we want to camp a little more comf- uh, comfortably, I think maybe we should buy a wagon and a draft horse. That way we can have our supplies pulled, and that would free us up to be less burdened on our travels. Wendy had turned around the second y'all said shopping, and he heard that. <laughs> Definitely be like, I second that. I ain't about this walking. 
Great. We got a. We, we'll do. Okay, perfect. We can. Okay, cool. We, we can, can probably all pitch in for a wagon and a draft horse. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Of uh, course. I could is, pick up some potions, too. That sounds good. Healing potions. Yeah. I would love some potions. Smart. Mm. Yeah, that's smart. You know, I got, I got some nice bottles for you to put those potions in. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Rusty does come back out and he goes. Cheaper that way. That reminds me, and he tosses a token to Draco, or Draco. Uh, That'll get you in. There is a wizard's college here. There is an academy, and they have a magic item shop and a bookshop. Using that token will get you a one-time entry for you and your whole group. Rusty, you just get better and better. I swear, you just get better and better. All right, so we got some magic items and some books. Anybody got any, like, magical things that they're super interested in? I, mm. I think look over Aaron and, uh, like, before I think about what I'm saying, I'm just like, maybe lightning resistance? <laughs> no, that's, you yeah, know. no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Rudis in his head, he's like, hey, yeah, last time, last time there was friendly fire, and that guy wasn't really happy with us. Mm. Let's not, let's not bring that up to the group, Brutus. Let's keep that between us. Anyway, um, I guess I'll hold on to the token. I don't know. Uh, unless, of course, there's somebody that's like feels like they want to be a token holder. No, you're all right. I trust you. I Sweet. Don't want that I'm just like, sort of I don't, it. I don't know if the blacksmith is going to have, you know, a, a blade particularly that... Uh, I mean, I I want something magical, but then I also know, you know, a thousand gold is only going to go so far when it comes to magic items. Well, listen, I already got a pretty nice halberd. I could pitch you some of mine. I don't care. No, it's fine. I mean, it's fine. I I appreciate the offer, but no, I uh, I gotta you know take care listen, of myself. It's a good. I, hey, listen, I feel that, but it's like it's a group effort. You know what I'm saying? Like the better you're equipped, you are the better chance we all have, right? So like, I'm chill. What else am I going to use it for? You know what I mean? We'll see what we find. We'll... There we go. Hey, perfect. All right, cool. Uh, does anybody else have anything like specific that they're looking for before we hit the dusty Wait. trail? Join y'all at the apothecary, please. Hmm. Well, Done. time to pull up Wait, magic items on D&D D &D Beyond. <laughs> Ulrich, what were you saying? Oh, um... You know, we could pick up magic boots or magic belts or something. Just, you know, it. you don't have to decide who it's for now, but if we find something with a useful ability and assign it later, I think that could come in handy. Totally. Yeah, hey, listen, or That's a good idea. You're smart. You said, what would you say? You would say you're, what are you, a paladin? You got like an oath or something? Uh, yes. Um, a, a paladin um, to, uh, to the Lady Ashley. What's the? She's awesome. As a, uh, uh, she is. Give me a. I feel like I've heard this story before. Give me a his. Give me a religion check, Draco. See if you know anything about this Ashley. What do I look like? With the plus zero. <laughs> Oops. Uh, it's okay. I have a plus one enough. as a cleric, so. <laughs> like we're both from the Feywild, well, you know. We're like, oh, okay, yeah. we we get this it. This isn't right. our religion. Cool. Religion's yeah, immortal right. this is, term. This is, their thing. this is the material plane thing. You guys have fun. Uh, that is a flat nine. <laughs> Outside of Bahamut, you know, like nothing at all about the gods in this realm. You just know that Bahamut's a pretty cool dude. So that name, the name rings a bell, but not for any religious reason. You're like, I could have sworn. Someone's told me that name before. Yeah, he takes like a solid five seconds to be like, I feel like I've heard that. Oh well. Anyway, sweet. You got like swords or like a what, what's like your weapon of choice, Ulrich? What do you do? Oh, what's I've been tank? blessed with this one, with this long sword. And I pull it out. It, it's it's very, very simple. Very, there's it's not flashy, but it does have a very nice bronze. Pommel with a um, with a sort of a little golden sword etched into it. It's nice, sweet man. All right, well, you're looking for like I don't know. You got a thousand gold. 
You just buying the wagon, or you, you got that something else in mind? Well, we're, we'll pitch in for the wagon, we'll pitch in for the draft horse, then I guess we'll have to feed the thing. I mean, it could eat off grass, but, you know, we might come into, you know, feeding the animals. It, it yeah, might right, also I mean, be prudent for us to find out exactly where we're going, because we might be going somewhere that a wagon might not really be fit to travel. Oh, yeah. Before we, we could always come we, back money. after the meeting and spend money then if there's things that we want to get later, too. Yeah, that's, sure. That's a, that's that's a, good, that's a good idea. idea. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, if it gets, like, really bad, I mean, Brutus could probably move the wagon at least, like, a little bit if the draft horse can't, you know? So that's, like... I like look over at Brutus to see what his reaction like, is to me sort of offering. Listen, listen. I'll do what I have to, but I'm expecting so much bacon if I have to do that. I'm going to be spending, I think, at least a good amount of my money on bacon. So if anybody has any like other food requests, just let me know. I think that's kind of where I'm going to put my biggest investment. <laughs> Because bacon strips are yummy, and I really want them in my tummy. <laughs> He's just singing to himself <laughs> that only Dr Draco can hear. Uh -oh. <laughs> just listening to that, trying to keep it, trying to keep a straight face, or at least I guess a straight face for Draco, which again it just is inherently mischievous looking. Val, uh, that's all. <laughs> yeah, Val said, "Listen, I'm done." <laughs> Brutus, <laughs> uh, she, uh, Brutus is too much. She had a moment. <laughs> The, her Discord is being glitchy, so she'll be back. But with that, you guys can set out. We'll, we'll get to anything L needs last in, for when Val gets back. First, the closest thing to you guys would be the weaponsmith. And, well, just blacksmith in general, armorer. He does all things. Silver, uh, the silver scale smithy. That'd be the closest. Yeah, well, uh... I'll I'll head I'll head there with uh, anybody who else who might want to uh, check out some weaponry and armor. Definitely there. I feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like like best weapons and armor in all of Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like like on the walk over, it's just Aaron like, and uh, Draco and Aaron's just like yeah. So I don't really focus on muscle groups as opposed to like overall sort of like full body workout sure. except for my well i mean i have to have to focus on my back because of the whole archery thing but that just sort of comes with the practice but uh yeah, dash, yeah, your latch i've never really dash rendar has entered the chat yeah man your lats are crazy dude like your back looks nuts it's just it's just this constantly <laughs> yeah totally Right, right. Hey, it makes sense, man. T bar rows would be Aaron's favorite like... lift. <laughs> every day is full like day. A, like you... every, every day. I did back today. Are you too. like a cardio <laughs> nut, or like what's your what's your deal? Are you like a I just... cardio guy? Are you like a. I mean, I wouldn't exactly say cardio specifically. It's just sort of trying to make you know, in this line of work, I suppose you never know when you're going to need to outrun something. So just trying to make sure I'm I'm fast and able to to run for a while. So. It just sort of, you That's know, smart. breath control, and also I get to the point. I I do get to that runner's high bit where you you just get to the point mm. where it's just a little euphoric when you're running, and so totally, but yeah, no yeah, way. yeah. And I'm jealous. I listen. I tried to do the 5K thing. I just was like, uh, you know, you get past a mile, and it's like, uh, I don't know. But I did. I spent a lot of my time doing like footwork because I felt mm. like. Oh, because yeah. I do agree with you, you know, being able to move is, I think, more than half the fight, you know, but... Um, Brutus in your head goes, you need, you need to work on your cardio. I have to carry you half the time. Yeah, listen, Brutus... It, it You're really work. strong, this later. but if you have to lift something more than eight times, no. <laughs> listen, we're going to talk about this later, Brutus, okay? All right, listen... Do a lot of footwork drills. Don't worry. Brutus is Brutus is upset with uh, how far we have to go. Brutus is pretty yeah, easily. You winded. sort of you uh, sort of just so. stared off into the middle distance for there for a second. I wasn't really sure. Yeah, sorry. That's yeah. I'm sorry. That's when I'm talking to Brutus. I just sort of do that. It's a it's a sort of you know. Brutus is just um, gonna roast. Well, she... Draco all the time. <laughs> 
just like trying to maintain this conversation while being absolutely roasted <laughs> in my head. Just hearing nonstop really good insults over and over. Like, oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's valid. <laughs> he got me. He really got me. Mm -hmm. He knows me. We've been together for too long. He knows. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, look, I guess we'll just kind of keep that. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. And like, as I let you walk ahead, I turn on to Bruce. I'm like, you gotta chill, okay? Look at me, my face. Listen, you gotta chill. Listen, I packed. Bacon I will chill. I will. I will dump fair. it out right now. If you dump out that bacon, I will bite your ankles. We're going nowhere, Brutus, okay? We gotta be on the same. Listen, page. listen, listen, listen. I love I'm you. Gonna... I love you, but I get to make fun of you. Because I let you ride me into battle. All right. You know what? That's fair. I just feel like sometimes you could add in a compliment. You know? I feel like... I feel like I compliment... I did! I you said know. you're really strong! That's true. You know what? Maybe it's on me. Maybe I feel like my mentality is that I'm only picking up... Who, who cares That's, about cardio you know when, you can lift, when you can lift up like 150 kilos with just off your chest? You know what, Brutus? You're right, actually. I think this is on me. I think this is a mentality thing. I think I need to make a shift. You're right. You know what? Thank you, Brutus. And I'm going to turn around <laughs> with a renewed figure, follow Aaron into the blacksmith shop. Brutus is just Cole's actual thoughts on weightlifting. Like, listen, I may not be able to run far, but I bench 400 pounds. <laughs> Episode 1, bacon. Episode 1, bacon and bodybuilding. That's the name. That's the episode. Bacon <laughs> Bacon, bacon, part from <laughs> bacon, barbells, and squirrel murder. Oh, <laughs> oh it got bacon, sad. Barbells and squirrels. It got, no, it's sad it now. Sad. Yeah, we, we stick that in the middle so that it ends on a high note. We dip a little bit so it's bacon and Listen. squirrel death and barbells. <laughs> Based on recent experience with my campaigns, they start, haha, funny jokes. Traumatic death of a major character that was important to one of the PCs. <laughs> But so you walk so in. You walk into this blacksmith. And, yeah. There you walk yeah. into the blacksmith. There are two silver dragonborn. There is a lady silver dragonborn sitting by the counter, and behind there is a kind of older looking silver dragonborn male with like scars all over his face and his scales, just hammering away. And a younger looking one also helping him, holding the tongs, occasionally, like breathing his cold breath onto them to cool them off. And uh, you guys see this and. She walks in, you walk in, she goes, Oh, hello there, welcome to the Silver Scale Armory. How may I help you? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, wonderful shop you have here. I was hoping for uh, to find uh, to find a blade, and I'll, I'll pull out my, uh, mechanically a rapier, but it's a little more of like, a, almost like a, 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 I think it's pronounced a epe, like a longer, narrow blade, but without kind of the, the fancy basket hilt. Um... Uh, something uh, a little light like this, but perhaps uh, not quite as mundane. I've been taking care of it as best as I can, but it's definitely uh, had better days. The uh, big dragonborn, he's also covered in what look like tribal, like, looks like he's from some kind of clan of dragonborn tattoos. He's about seven feet tall. He just takes it out of your hand with his two fingers. Is that right, boy? Do you want something exactly like this, or maybe what are you in the market for? Scimitar, rapier. Uh, I prefer I prefer the straight Cutlass. blade. Uh, not exactly a, a yeah something something a little lighter mm. uh, like that. Um, I don't know if I don't think I really have the timetable to for a full commission at the moment. But uh, if you happen to have anything of a similar build, perhaps either silvered or with some magical qualities. I, uh, I'd, I'd love to take a look at what you have. Right then. Just kind of walks out and he t pulls this rapier out and it's a little bit longer than the one you had. And it's got this like kind of ethereal glow to it of like red. And he just tosses it to you. Let's catch you. Just give that a couple swings, boy. Uh, Aaron, like, catches the handle out of the air and then kind of, like, immediately goes... It's a very, like, traditional, like... It's, it's like, a position. Like, he goes into, like, a, a full proper, like, fencing stance and just, like, takes it through a few motions and uh, 
feels feels very good in the hand. Uh, excellently made, sir. Uh, what uh, is there anything uh, anything special about it, or is it just this rapier, uh, unparalleled this... when it comes to balance and blade? <laughs> this rapier does a little bit more damage when you hit someone right in a critical spot. This is a vicious rapier plus one. When you roll a 20 on your attack roll with this magic weapon, the target takes extra seven, seven damage of the weapon's type. You have a plus, plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls with this magic weapon. It certainly yes. is. Uh, it's, it's certainly better than what I have now. Uh, what is its price, uh, sir? Yeah, I could part with this one for about 650 gold. A very fair price indeed, sir. I'll, uh, I'll take it. He, okay, so you lose six hundred fifty gold, and he, you gain. No, I don't, I don't, I don't lose it. <laughs> you spend it. You spend it, no. and you get a I vicious, a and vicious you get, rapier. You get a vicious rapier plus one. Thank you. Not just a vicious rapier, a plus one vicious rapier. Yeah, plus one. Better than I was We're expecting talking. to get. Yeah. Uh, you know how I do. I give I give the good magic items because I throw very powerful things at you. <laughs> because you'll need it. So that's I, the I, scary I've other side, here. is that you will need it. It's kind of the point in I've Bravira where whenever I give someone a, a really powerful magical item, usually they'll message me privately like, So why? Yeah. Why do I have... What dark trick is this? When I gave Nyx that have... staff. <laughs> yeah, like I don't... What, what do you want me to do with this? I'm confused. <laughs> gave a level. Why can like, I summon aberration? I got. I gave it level. It. I got it. Gave a level eleven druid a staff with ninth level spells on it, and Storm was just like what? eighth level. That like eighth level. Ninth eighth level, level. But still, now I can do nine eighth level spells, but I couldn't until like a couple days ago. So, <laughs> so the rest of you just looks at your group, and the rest of you need weapons or armor. Yeah, well, I I was going to ask if you had any, like, uh, I like my Albert. Uh, he sort of gestures to, like, this uh, long pole axe that's sort of strapped to my back that sort of seems to have this, again, sort of a little bit of a glow to it. But I have this, he pulls out this mace that looks like it just, like, he picked it up on the side of the street somewhere. He's like, how is, <laughs> this is not, I'd love to have a side arm that's a little bit more reliable do you guys do maces here is that something that you guys are interested in he pulls out three different maces they all are glowing one of them is glowing gold one glowing silver and one glowing bronze i'm gonna pick out the one that's glowing bronze because i love the theme and i'm like what so what is what is this what does this do hey, are you a paladin boy yes yeah. Good, because yeah, yeah. only a paladin can use I turn, around to, <laughs> I turn around to Ulrich. I guess we both are. We're both, yeah, we, we could, either one of us could use well, this. Only a paladin can use this weapon. This is a mace of smiting. Oh, smiting. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. Yeah, uh, how much is this? I'm going to sort of like swing it around a little bit. I just it is like really the lightest attached. weapon you've ever swung in your hands before, but feels them extremely sturdy. It's and it's got four bladed prongs on each side. And as soon as you touch them, the imagery changes from blank to imagery of your god, Bahamut. And How much is it? I, I gotta have this. So let I me describe first. This. When you roll a 20 on an attack roll made with this weapon, the target makes an extra 7 bludgeoning damage or 14 damage if it's a construct. If a construct has 25 hit points or fewer after taking this damage, it is destroyed. Hmm. Proficiency and uh, you get a plus one bonus to attack and damage roll made with this magic weapon. The bonus increases to plus three when you use the mace to attack a construct. So little, this one's a little bit more pricey, lads. Eight hundred gold. Done. Done. Hey, yeah, done. and done. I would immediately shell out the eight hundred gold. We do not uh, haggle in this house. <laughs> Spec craftsman. <laughs> no. Meanwhile, the no, craftsman, I'm sure, would be the Jimmy most haggly. <laughs> he goes, like, no, he this goes, is perfect. He, he just looks you up and down and he goes, Are you a part of the Platinum Light Boy? 
I just sort of like flip the mace around before I sort of hook it to my belt and I'm like yeah but what's it to you you know about the platinum light what's your deal he he goes I had never enjoyed myself but you can tell this guy's definitely got more barbaric vibes than his that he just kind of his son walks up my boy here is looking to join you a lot and he is wanting to know just kind of a little bit more if he should based on where he lives if he's a dragon he's worried that going to an elven kingdom will be treacherous for him listen I'm gonna look at him and I'm gonna sort of gesture to again because I've not put on any of the gear so I'm still rocking the shirtless like like leaves uh, vibe and I'm just sort of looking at him like, like, like they took me and they've made me into what I am and if they're willing to do that you can bet your ass they're going to do the same for you. Okay? He, Promise. He just, he goes, and he just elbows him and goes, told you, lad, Gareth is full of shite. And he just goes, oh, hey, thank you, sir. Ah. Uh, oh, I, is it Gareth? L- l- listen, Gareth is, Gareth is what we call uh, the worst. So, <laughs> like, whatever he says is just going to be the worst version of whatever's true. I promise. He's like, I watched him stare out a raining window for three minutes. There was nothing out there. I think he was just brooding. Okay, so if you're worried about, like, based on what Gareth has to say, just remember he stared out the window for three minutes. And I don't think anything bad happened. I just think that's who he is as a a wolf. (laughs) This is just making me go... Think of that Dragon Age 2 Fenris line, I'm not brooding, <laughs> like, at all times. But, so the, the kid just goes, thank you, sir, I, I, I plan on heading that way soon. And I, I make the armor here, so I'm hoping that they have room for an armorer. Oh, come on. You make the armor here? Are you kidding me? I'm going to go over and check out some of the armor. Uh, there what's is... The, what's the... First thing you see is there's plate armor on... Uh, he leads you over to it. He's like, this is my best work. And it is just immaculate silver plate armor. And he kind of like... Just kind of shows you and it is... Kind of got a little bit of... A glow to it. And it's not the most sturdy. But you feel a sense of... Like... Anyone who wear this would be like part of a team kind of thing. And he's got three different sets of it. It's a plate of Knight's Fellowship. And he's able to... You, anyone using this armor can summon basically a spiritual weapon that is a knight. That has its own stat block. Incredible. Uh, I'm going to look at him and be like... What did you say your name was? Uh, uh, Endris. Write that down. Write that down. I sort of like uh, look over at Brutus and sort of nod, just just to insinuate that we should both remember this name. And I look back and I'm like, listen, as soon as I get back to some uh, pen and paper, I'll write you a letter. Okay? I'll just go ahead and let him know that you're thinking about coming and that, as far as I can tell, you're the kind of person we'd want. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, he just looks like giddy. And he's like, all right, and shoves him back. He's like, go back to working on your shields, boy. And then he looks at us. All right, do any of the rest of you need uh, any armor, weapons, anything? I don't think most of us are no. there. Oh. I think Ulrich's here. Ulrich. Yeah, I turn back oh. to, yeah, I turn back to Ulrich. I'm like, Ulrich, yeah, you were going to... Where am I? Are you going to get something? Um, Let's see. I can only really use lighter armor. This studded leather is okay, but, you know, it, it, it can only handle so much uh, abuse. Sort of frown, I'm like, okay, light armor paladin. I can I can vibe with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, because... Yeah, what do you, what do you guys have in, for light armor? Uh, clunking around in the woods isn't very good for hunting. He just smiles and goes, hey, fair. Yeah, we have plenty of armor here that could suit you, lad. It's like what a more akin to leather, studded leather. 
Hmm. If you like, we have uh, some media monitor that when you edit, it makes you... Anyone can wear it. He brings out some elven chain with two uh, silver pauldrons. It's medium armor that anyone who wears becomes proficient in that armor while wearing it. Oh, oh that sounds so cool. Yeah. Uh, can, can I have a closer look at that? The He just holds it up for you, and it also, as soon as you grab it, magically shifts to your size. No, no, no. I think this is wonderful. That's and how, it, that's how I work magic armor in my world, just so we don't have to worry about sizing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, and I kind of like look at it a little bit closer. Is it steel? Is it mithril? Like, it's magic, yes, but like, is it... it just appears to be some kind of silver, but like, mm. kind of ethereal looking. So, like, as you look at it, it shines really bright, brightly and reflects light off of it. Mm. But at the same time, like if you hold it in shadow, it turns a little shadowy because it does not impose uh, disadvantage on stealth checks. Ooh. Whatever, oh, whatever this is it's wonderful. Made out of, it's got a lot of apostrophes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, de definitely. I, I, I would love to buy this. Could I also, I mean, buy this and barter with this studded leather armor I'm wearing now. He kind of just grabs you, turns it around, like, looks at the armor. It's just basic studded leather, correct? Yeah, just, just basic, but well taken care of. And give you a hundred for it. You can tell he's, like, is charmed by Ulrich's just, like, wow! Wonder to the world, and he's just, like... Sweet boy. He takes the leather armor, and he just... Hands you 100 gold, but then he holds up the other two. He's like, that would make this about 700. All right. So I hand back the 100 he just gave me, plus uh, <laughs> 600 of the other gold I got. You now have Elven Chain. Woo! Oh, uh, I'll, I'll just pick up a mundane shield while I'm there. He just looks at it. And well, actually, if I see... I was gonna say, if I see you looking at shields, I'm gonna, like, glance an eye over to you and be like, Oh, hey, listen, if you're looking for shields, I have a shield, I never use it. So if you want one, you can just take mine. Actually, I have an idea. If you guys want to pool your money to get a shield that is very good, and even someone wielding two-handed weapons can wield. Okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> so the, the boy walks up and he pulls out the, the spinny shield. He pulls up the like fanciest looking shield you've ever made. It's got a platinum gem in the center and radiating with what looks like just glowing like white light throughout. And he just goes, This shield's a little bit special. And he picks up a great sword and he picks up the shield, and you can tell it's hard for him to swing. He says the command word, and he says a word, I'm gonna like, if you guys pick it, pick the command word, and it starts floating around him as he wields a two-handed weapon, and he goes, go ahead, try to strike me. I'll try and strike him. You try and strike, like, where the shield is, and the shield just goes immediately to where your sword is and blocks it. Goes, this sword, this that shield, is, yeah, I mean. <laughs> this shield allows you to use whatever you have with two hands instead of one. But I'm is... holding the halberd in two hands, and I look to Aaron. I'm just like, I want this. It is a bit, and then the father goes, "It's the most expensive thing in the shop, apart from one specific suit of armor." Uh, we. <laughs> this is a very rare shield. Yeah. How? Uh, put my halberd back. Well, how how much how is it at least so that uh, if nothing else, we have a goal. Five thousand four hundred gold. Look at the 200 gold I have left. <laughs> I don't, um, the boy says, But p perhaps, Father, due to a letter of recommendation, we could knock a bit off the price for this, this night. 4,500 gold. I think this might be something we come back for. Mm. He picks the shield up, puts it up right next to a me just what looks like in a lack of a better term, perfect plate armor. 
uh, armor of invulnerability oh standing right yeah. next to it. Yeah. I gotta get out of this store. I just, like, turn. There's, like, I think for the first time, he looks truly crestfallen. Like, the leaves, which are really brightly colored, sort of, like, so Draco, a little bit. Draco is like, just me at a rent just, fair when I walk into any armor shop, and Storm has to go, correct, no, yes. and pull me out of it. Just, like, head down and, like, walk out. You I'm tell me like, to, to be fair. That'll be actually us next weekend. The next weekend. Uh, Every time I walk into armor or place her sword, I'm looking at, like, the fanciest thing they have, and Storm just goes, no, no. No, no, no. You can't... Uh, I... I pull out one of the leftover sausages from breakfast out of like a pouch and I just hand it over <laughs> to Draco. A pocket sausage. Up to, like, I like take it as I'm passing and there's just like a silent, like quick eye contact of, of thanks as I take the sausage and this, just take a bite out of it. This is just for Christian. I'm going to edit in the sad guts music <laughs> just in the video. Just the just for this moment. <laughs> give me that give me that Mustang line. As I walk out, I look as I take it, I'm gonna look at Oak and go, It's a terrible day for rain. As I walk out but, outside. but but Draco, it, it's not raining. I pulled, I'm not wearing anything on my head, I pull a leaf down. Brutus Brutus talks for the first time with the most eloquent voice. It is indeed raining. And just keeps just starts walking. <laughs> This is the first time you guys have heard Brutus talk, and he just sounds extremely eloquent. It is indeed raining, my boys. And then he keeps walking. It is raining, my dudes. <laughs> he oh, uses his oh, wing. He uses raining. his wing to pat Draco on the shoulder. I already yeah, have a shield. We're all consoling Draco, giving him like pats on the shoulder. Yeah, we're, we're gonna. I, I knew you already had a shield. That's why I was like, I'm not gonna. I didn't have it equipped. I was like, I obviously don't have one. So, now, as you guys are going to, <laughs> I'm a fighter. to meet up with the rest, we're going to pan to the other three who I'm assuming either went to went to the apothecary or something involving magic of some kind. Yeah, I was going to go to the apothecary to look for potions. Uh, Elle, did you go with them? Yep. Okay. I know one day it probably went. Yes, let's go, ladies. So, as you guys walk it's into this... Girls. For me. The uh, name of the spot here, I cannot believe really I actually wrote this down. Bubble, bubble, coin, and trouble. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Stealing that. Shakespeare. Come on. And as you guys walk oh, in, there okay. are three women, like, walking at one, sitting at the front, there is a young uh, elven woman, uh, wood elf. Behind her, there is a halfling who is actively making potions. And there is a half orc. Uh, druid who is currently like making the plants they use for the potions. Excellent. And here's you guys. Uh. Yeah, so she just says, the elf? Oh, hello. What may I do for you three? Hi. Um, we're going Are you a fae? Uh, yes, I am. Could I um, trouble you okay? for one hair off of your moth wings? Can I ask why? Study. Can I insight check that? Yeah. Knowing Faye lore, like, yeah. it's a lot of... Healy is normally fairly welcoming as a person. Being asked for things specifically like that sets a couple of hairs off ends. Especially walking in to begin with. Like, not even, barely a hello. Can I have your hair? <laughs> this woman is very just like, she just has this a blank stare about her at all times. That's a 28. She really just wants to study one of your hairs. Okay. Um, if that's all that is, um, do you have any potions that we can get in exchange? Um, for adventuring, kind of specifically, healing sure, would be good. Sure, we have many. And she pulls out a bunch of healing potions. And Wandi, you are just immediately disgusted in the glass that they used. It is atrocious. <laughs> it looks like someone just like made like crap they just took random bottles and just filled them some of them legit look like they're in former wine bottles or mead bottles oh, my land. <laughs> i now need to make a patron named lanta that's going to approach my <laughs> <laughs> that so, you call my name many times <laughs> and as 
You just walk up, there's plenty of potions, and she just puts the box, and she goes, I, I will give you anything uncommon or less for that hair. One potion. Okay. Anything sounds else like a deal. You, you'll have to buy. Um, sounds like a deal. Um, grab a little bit of, like, uh, rough fur, um, and in exchange for a healing potion. Okay. So... For a healing potion, yeah, you just take a potion, and what would it be? Uh, for uncommon, you could take a potion of, of greater healing. Yes. Cool. Thank you. So, you take that, and she just plucks one of your hairs. And just... Oh, I plucked it for her! I wanted this one. And then she walks, and she puts it into a bottle, and casts something, and it starts levitating. Hands it to the half-orc, and just starts studying, and the half-orc just goes, Puts it up in the middle of their like little magic they're doing. It starts to float. Don't laugh. I definitely follow it over to kind of watch what they're doing. The half orc just looks up. Hi, hello. Hi. Oh, is this your hair? Yeah. Um, I'm just watching. Okay. She starts casting thing, and then you see like the hair start to multiply, but look more plant-like. In the bottle. Mm. Oh, it does work like I thought. It's beautiful. What are you doing with it? I'm turning your hair into plants. We're working on this new thing to turn living things into plants. Mm. We're going to test to see if it works on Faye, and it does. I mean, we already have that kind of magic in my world. Just turns and looks. I can't do it. Goes, I can't help it. Fig, did you hear that? What if I heard... And then she looks at the rest of you. Would you all oh. like any potions? I wonder if it actually works hey. better with us. Because of the Fae. This is really interesting. I'm like fully enamored. I'm so lost the other track team. of what I was doing. She has her random assorted box of potions and she goes, Would you, would you two like anything particular? Ale, you take a look. I have to gather my thoughts. I am I'm having a moment here. Okay. okay, I'll take a potion of greater healing, and do you have anything to help me increase my spell slots? I don't think she would say it like that. Okay, let me see what we got here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a few things. A potion of greater healing, that'll be 30 gold. Perfect. Uh, how, many, how much gold do we actually have? Sorry, I missed that. A thousand. Thousand gold. Okay. Okay, we'll take that. Because <laughs> I don't have anything specifically help casting more spells, but this kind of is. And she holds up a white potion bottle, and uh, it's a potion of haste. You drink it, and you can hmm. do more. Do more. Also, since you're a sorcerer, that brings me up to this point. You can cast bonus actions. As a bonus action, you can cast any spells that says bonus action. So that means you can cast two level spells in a turn. So that means, hypothetically, you could Lightning Bolt, Twins, uh, Quicken Spell, Fireball. I can. Because Sorcerer and uh, is my favorite casting class, and I made them better. <laughs> it is very... Okay. And I so did Boulder's Gate 3, was... frankly. And when I saw that, I was like, see, I'm not the only one who thinks that way. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, yeah. I love playing Sorcerer and Bowler's Gate. So, that is a... She does have a potion. She has, like, seven of these potions of haste. I will take one. Okay. Do you have anything else that would be good for a, a spellcaster like myself? Oh, well, we, we do have a lot of things. Hold on. She pulls out. And this, and it makes you better at... Everything, kind of. It's a potion of advantage. Basically, you can drink the potion and you can pick one check, get advantage on that roll. Okay, and how much does it cost? Ten gold. Nothing fancy. Ten gold. Oh, not too bad. I'll take that too. And for the potion of haste, that would be forty gold. Forty gold. It's done. Um, Do you have a potion of resistance to, let's say all kinds of things well of course we have potions of resistance and she holds up resistance it's a potion well that's kind of 
This potion lets you pick one type of thing and be resistant to it. I can make a thing. everything. Say I drank a potion and just everything I would be resistant to. She pulls out one potion and it's like sizzling. We have it, but it's a bit expensive. So pretty. How much? 850 gold, and it only works for an hour. I will take it. So I'm going to have to homebrew that. Because <laughs> <laughs> regular potion of resistance just gives you resistance to one thing. Just remember that you have a potion of mass resistance, let's say. Okay. okay. She just looks over um, at uh, Helia and Wendy. Do you two want anything else? Um. <laughs> um, I'll buy a couple more healing potions as well. I'd like um, some healing potions. But I gotta ask where you're getting your glass from. I just find it. <laughs> you just find it. <laughs> you just find it. It's just glass. It's not really that important. Well, <laughs> that's all the same thing, you know? No! Glass from here, glass from hey, here. Ale, you stop uh, ex right ex Exactly. Glass is just glass. It's breakable and it holds things. Let me just blow your mind. Psychic here. damage. Let <laughs> <laughs> me roll on a wisdom that. save soon. He's back on his back and he, he's gonna pull out a, a very ugly potion bottle that he made, but he thinks it's beautiful. Okay. But oh, you're, you're showing you me an example of something uglier than I have. Ma'am. Ma'am, let, let, let me just. Oh. Art is in the eye of the beholder, all right? And I'm. What do beholders have to do with this? I'm we have we, right now. we have one. If if we could ask him. You have a beholder. Wait, what? Yes. Uh, yes. Hold up a minute. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> wait. Hey, wait. Uh, he kind of a beholder floats at her, and you talk about it. He just goes. You could not pronounce my name. So I refer to myself here as Tim. Tim, will you tell these fine folks that this, uh, here, put the glass off. Like, pretend this is like- We're really gonna do an Eye of the Beholder like, show. Art by a two-year-old, okay? He just kind of walks in, he just looks, this is what wait, floats doing. over, looks at it, goes, Horrible. It's okay, I guess. And then floats back it's behind okay. the curtain. <laughs> Where you going? Where you go? You come back here. I ain't gonna last you over here. Listen, listen, y'all. Okay, listen. This, this piece right here, it may not look like much right now, okay? But, when you give just... it five to ten years, and this unique piece right here, um, they're gonna be sprinkled all across the lands, and you're gonna realize, oh my gosh, one day a light bulb's gonna go off, and all of y'all are gonna be like, this is a work of art. And you confuse me. Are there any potions that you would like? He pulls out two more potion bottles. He's like, I would like some healing potions, but I can you please put them in here? What's cut? So options are you can get a potion of greater healing for 30 gold. You can get a potion of superior healing for 80 gold or a potion of supreme healing for 120. I'll just... take two of the superior potions. Okay. Yeah. He wants a superior one, but he's also going to go, I, I will, hear me out. I would normally charge y'all about the same price for one of these, which I'm telling you, in like 10 years, you're going to make like 10 times back when I it's become like famous. Babies. You're going to be like, that guy was a genius. Anyway, this I will just give furbies. you one of for free if you cut that in half. <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Amazing. Why do you keep, you keep making these characters that need to do deception and persuasion, and then they're wisdom casters? <laughs> Seventeen. Okay, actually, actually, yes. I'll take twenty gold off. I'll take it off, and this is you put this somewhere safe now, probably over by your beholder. So he she grabs it and just it. drops it into the box. <laughs> He's gonna, by the way, a single tear goes down his eyeball, 
Uh, I didn't expect to be roasting everybody this hard with my NPCs. Fire boots. Fire boots. You always do. What are you talking about? You're the one pushing the buttons, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. But it's also like I you walk. You walk. These characters do what they want. You know. You just. You just kind of walked in, and you walked into the place where they clearly didn't care about glass, and went, look at my glass, and they were like, okay. But anyway. <laughs> and also, I don't do it all the time. I just have Galadin roast Felicity every chance he gets, because they're best friends. You had a lot of people roasted at the beginning of uh, Tragedy of Atharis, I believe. That was just... just a lot of sass. I make sassy characters, it just sprinkles into my NPCs. <laughs> just wait for my sorcerer, Storm. He's going to be so sassy. But, anywho. You guys get your potions. And she says, If you'd like anything else, please remember us here at... D double Bubble Coin in Trouble. Yeah, one question for you. If I was looking for, like, something a little more convenient to carry on my glass in, because... Worried on this adventure, we've got a we've got a unique individual who likes to break bosses, and uh, I'd like to keep these a little more safe. So, is there anywhere you think might have like you know like some maybe magical bags around here? We do have bags of holding here if you would like one. How much would that cost me? Three hundred gold. Done. Handle. Go. Okay, and as you guys. Are you guys done in this shop and going to meet up with your friends? Or did Storm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, L, were you done as well with just getting your healing potions and your potion of haste and your resistance potion? I was trying to remember what I got from you. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you got a, a big uh, resistance with potion. Superiority, actually, superior healing as well. Just okay. to have two healing potions. Yeah. Okay. So, um, haste greater, superior, and that resistance one. Mm -hmm. The resistance one is not a deity beyond I'll have to homebrew it, but okay. so, yeah. and it only works for now. Remember that. Uh, you guys leave, and I love how Wendy just bought a uh, bag of holding when I'm pretty sure someone else in the party already has a bag. Of holding. What my stuff touching other people's stuff, anyways? <laughs> one cool. person has the group's bag this of holding. Old. Wendy has his own bag of holding. Yeah. Like, this, Wendy, is, this is for Wendy me. Wendy has a bag of holding, and then the group has <laughs> We can carry all We put all the bag of, the of holding. I, I had a player once who was a barbarian, and they gave him the bag of holding, and he just decided to take the heads of the things he killed and throw them in the bags. And there was an artsy character, too, who put her art in the bags. So there was, like, red dragon's head blood all over her art. Oh, no. <laughs> and it was like... And he was like, I knew, but my character didn't know. And I'm like, you did make a four intelligence barbarian, so. He couldn't read. That'll do it. And then they fought mind players, and he couldn't read. <laughs> it, into four, and they fought intellect powers. He was like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having a great time. <sighs> Anywho, you guys all meet back up. You... Meet up, like, right in the walkway up to the upper city. And the guards let you through, because you're free to go to the upper city. And you get there, and everything somehow is, like, marble white. All of the buildings are, like, marble white. The walls are marble white. It's so bright it's very and pretty. This place is... I, 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 I well, kind of right. start to slowly right. get close it's, to some of the marble stuff. It's that scene in Return of the King where Pippin and Gandalf are at the top of Minas Tirith and they're both squinting really hard. I'm going to, I think, throw a glance back towards Helia to see what mm -hmm. their reaction is because I feel like potentially we're on the same page as far as just like lots of not nature all in one place. It's all like one color. Actually... I'm just Helia, this gives off light. I was gonna say, I think with the brilliance of it, um, it's kind of overriding any kind of like unfamiliarity to it. So you look back and she's just like almost like overwhelmed with everything. Seem a bit like awestruck, but 
a lot of emotions going through her across her face that she doesn't seem to really hide necessarily. Oh, yeah, dear. Do you need to borrow my sunglasses? Oh, no, this, this is wild. I've never seen anything like it. It's yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's something. Uh, before before we would have eventually gone up, Aaron would have like run back and actually put on like his full like armor and stuff. Like he's obviously like wanting to look as presentable as possible. Uh, so he's got like his armor and everything on. He is he is geared up. Amazing contradiction to uh, Draco, who is still carrying the bag <laughs> over one shoulder with his shirtless. The halberd is sort of just like propped over the shoulder. Um, he has sort of like stuck the halberd, at least to some extent, in the bag. So it's just kind of sticking off because he's having fun flipping the mace around in his hand because it's now like this light but also super sturdy uh weapon that he has and he's kind of hoping somebody notices it as he's flipping it around and they're walking up uh but yeah he definitely is maybe maybe not as presentable as uh as you would want to be <laughs> for a for a spot like this uh i wave at the other members of our party and ask them uh, <clears throat> did you all find what you were looking for at the apothecary yeah did you have a good time at the armor? Yes, we did. And I got a new set of armor. And I gestured Beautiful. towards the, the elf chainmail that's now glittering in all the light. But uh, Uruk seems very curious as to what you you all were up to. I'll, I'll like pull out like all the potions that I got. <laughs> Just healing stuff. I figured we might need it. I don't really know what we're getting into. I just, we saw all the things we wanted and all the things we didn't want. <laughs> Speaking of things you don't <laughs> want, Wendy, um, you notice that there is a stall set up. Not in the town center, but around. And you see someone from your guild selling glass that looks very different from yours. It's a... Uh, no, it's just one of the members. It's a large Kolsar woman. And she's just... Magically... Making glass in front of people. Showing off a little bit. Do I know her name? Uh, yeah, that's Trish. Dish. Trish. Walk on over. And be like, oh! Fancy meeting you here, fish. Oh, well, if it isn't windy. Wendy, all right. Wendy. Oh, no, I like my name. I, I like whimpering windy better. You're isn't that what you always did? You always just whimpered to the guildmasters about how your glass wasn't absolute shit. For your information, they just don't know good art when they see it. Oh, I think they do. That's why they pay me more than they paid you. Just wait until I make so much money. I am gonna return to that guild, and you are gonna be the one whimpering. Hmm. Make me sad that you don't like me. Oh, oh, dear. I might as well just look at this massive coin pouch that I've made today. That makes me feel better. Yeah. Uh, you and like Trish do not have a good history. This is the person who was the meanest to you back home. Is it sitting on the counter there? Uh, yeah. He really just wants to smack it off. <laughs> like a cat. <laughs> Give me a dexterity check. You know what? You're a monk. Give me an attack roll. Okay. Oh, it's a nat one. So. Wait, wait, that's not one. Seven. Oh, okay. Okay. it's still good. <laughs> Plus eight. Fifteen. It's not good. Plus eight. Yeah, you just psh, smack it off the counter and she just looks down at it. She says, Oh, you tieflings do live such short lives. It's a wonder you stay children forever. I think at that point, yeah, I'm going to walk up and I'll be like, like, I don't know what your deal is, okay? But the the bullying is not necessary, right? Like, 
Oh, Wendy, you made a friend? I'm talking to you, okay? You can talk to me, thanks. Roll me, okay. roll me an okay, intimidation check. Uh, what's my intimidation? Oh, you know. Probably pretty... If I remember... Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not great. That's a natural one as well. So, uh, the shirtless leaves are not really doing a whole lot for the intimidation factor with the bag slung over my shoulder as I'm talking. I drop something also as I'm saying that, so I have to, like, bend over and pick it up. Um, actually, uh, while this is going on, it seems like they're making a bit of a ruckus and stuff like that. Can I cast invisibility on myself? Sure. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to like, while she's distracted, insulting these people because she seems like she's having fun with this, swipe like a bit of the gold away from her because it's just there on the table. It's on the ground okay. now. Oh, too, right? oh, it's on the Dude. ground now? Oh, okay, that's even better. Just... Yeah. Give me gold a coins just disappointing. slight, give me a slight of hand check. Uh, all right. Let's see. With, with advantage, is that with perhaps? advantage? Since yeah, I'm since talk, cause I'm, because advantage I'm because of di because of distraction and invisibility. Because of how badly yeah. I'm doing. And they have disadvantage on perception checks. Uh, she 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 did, and I just rolled it, and it was not good. All right. Let's see if this works. I rolled a six and a five. Well, good thing that they got a nat one on that perception. So hey. you steal the whole coin pouch while she's busy yelling at. Oh, and she just goes, "Oh, Wendy, when you thought when you made a friend, I thought I should have figured it was someone." And she's taller than you. Uh, she's Colsar. Colsar. Yeah, I'm like picking up my mate. I tried to flip my mace so, and I dropped it. So I I'm forgot like some of you on plates. As I come back, I'm like, so Colsar are is the my equivalent of Goliath. They're more based around storms than frost. They're about their height ranges between eight and or seven and nine feet tall. She's on the shorter side for a Colsar, but she's still like seven foot five. And she just looks down and she she goes, hmm. "Well, I guess this is making me extremely annoyed. I'm going to take a break." And she puts up a clothes, magics away all of her glass. And as you guys walk away, she goes to pick up her coin purse and it's gone. And she looks around really confused and she doesn't notice anything. Wow, I'm rolling a lot of nat ones right now. <laughs> and uh, Ulrich, you have a coin purse with... I'm just going to roll for this. 450 gold in it. <laughs> Jesus! My man just about made all the money back. <laughs> I rolled on a D6, like the most wholesome and he rolled a 4. Also, like, wildly, like, for some reason, frugal. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, she, so she, she said mean things about my new friend. And, you know, I didn't like... like I, I don't like... So, yeah. Um, Wait, are, you, are you, like... Do we know you stole that, or...? Do you just pop back no, in holding the coin purse? Right? <laughs> he was invisible, but okay. some of us have a very high passive perception. Well, actually, it's not this high this time. It is high, yeah. but not usual. So not usual. You, you, said it, you said it was 450? 450. All right. Um, 50 of the gold coins, I, I, uh, I like slip over to Wendy. Like, I was like, I didn't like how rude that person was. Well, he's just like sniffling, and it pains him to say it, but he looks at him like, Thank you. <laughs> I, I won't forget this. <laughs> I, I could have handled it on my own, but what? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to put the worst bully you've ever had in. <laughs> Immediately. Me. Yeah, I just turn back my like, Wendy's having that? a so hard up. time straight away. I'm gonna prove all y'all wrong. You wait. Well, yeah, they suck. I don't. I think you already proved them wrong. I mean, you gotta be kind of another level to be a bully that sells glass. You know, I figure that's kind <laughs> of a bad business to be in, right? I mean, like as soon as anybody gets mad, everything you have is extraordinarily breakable. That's a good point. Mm. 
They really need to think their priorities. Uh, Aaron, give me a uh, constitution saving throw to not immediately start smashing things. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you million. made this aesthetic. <laughs> you... <laughs> a million. No, we're not going to make it. I'm not going to make anyone do anything except for maybe L sometimes. <laughs> it's a hard life selling glass. It's a hard life. So. Oh, uh, I, I, I keep some pebbles in my pouch for reasons because I have a spell involving pebbles. I give one of them to Wendy. I'm like, if you ever see her again. Kill her. A pebble? You said pebble. You're like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> People oh, in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. People I'll, outside of the house, though. All right, I will. Uh, I will save this. Look, look, I am. I am. I'm air writing a name on it. Save for fish. So. <laughs> I love that. That's the mean nickname you came up with. And what's funny is I was. One of my other friends, that is also your friend, mentioned a story about fish today. <laughs> Ruka well, was talking about I fish. Imagined. You said return. You know, like when you said you were air riding on it. The first thing I thought of, and this says a lot about who I am as a person, but was like those World War II pictures of the bombs that say like "Return to Adolf," and so I'm just seeing "Return to Windy" like air written on this pebble. So, you guys progress. I imagine towards your destination, and uh, as you guys do, you hear a roar. And a young silver dragon lands by the entrance. Uh, for you, Draco, you recognize this dragon. This is the mount of one of your commanders. Is do I know its name? Uh, the dragon uh, Selvara. It's a fe it's a lady dragon, and Brutus has a massive crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I just he give, turns to you and he's like, I give Brutus a look. He's like, Draco, please tell me my scales look good right now. Do I look, do I look handsome? Just like, I just nod, you know, because I'm not trying to out him, all right? I'm yeah, just nodding, okay. like, yeah. I gotta, the, I gotta, he puffs his chest out as he strut, but all of you see this little wormling just start walking, all, trying to look all powerful. I'm gonna approach uh, Silvara though, and I'm gonna be like. She just looks down, and sees Brutus, and looks up at you, and waits for you to say anything. Hey, uh, any any particular reason you're showing up, or or you just were in the neighborhood and wanted uh, to drop by, or like what? A meeting. Right on. Uh, is that do you? Because we were actually we were headed to different meeting. A meeting. Also, different meeting. Your cool. your mission is right, different. Probably. Your mission is different. Right than, on. Than Sir Kylan's. Right. Yeah. Totally. I. I yeah. I respect. What? So what? What's that? Like. What? What's your mission? Like, what are you got? What are you up to? You, you, you know better. Secret? You know better than to ask me that. If you wish to know, ask Kylan. I gotta try. I gotta try. All yeah. right. But listen. Um, no, you go. I, I was about to say something, you go. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Lady Edith is expecting you. Do remember to speak with decorum. She looks at Brutus and to keep him quiet. Yeah, well, you know, Brutus has a lot of interesting things to say. Brutus is actually a lot smarter than I think a lot of people give him credit for. He is just panicked and not talking. He's just... <gasps> <gasps> Just like, just like trying to motion with my hand for him to continue not talking. He's a he's a lot for, smarter than people give him credit for. I think he'll grow into it. He is but a child, and for comparison, for a young versus wormling, for those who don't know, a young dragon is about the size of a house, and a wormling is the size of like a wolf. <laughs> so she just looks at him. That, that, that those are some high aspirations. She gives him a courtesy, like, just little, as she touches her nose to his, and is like, Hello, young Brutus, and he's just like... <clears throat> and then telepathically, not realizing she can hear him, to Draco, she, she touched my nose! <laughs> she just looks at Draco. <sighs> Proceed. 
Cool. All right. Well, hey, listen. Good luck on your meeting. I'm sure you guys have important people to talk to. I hope that goes well. Uh, are you? Do you wait? Do you get to sit in on the meeting, or do you have to wait outside? Is it one of those? Like... It's. I have the same bond with Kylan as you do with Brutus. He, I can hear everything that is happening in front of Kylan, just as Brutus can hear everything happening with you. Totally, but I was just wondering, like, is it like you get to do that from, like, inside, or do you have to do it from outside? Because sometimes they'll let Brutus come in, which is awesome, but sometimes they're like, Brutus has to stay outside, which sucks. I was wondering, like, what the vibe was for your meeting, or, like, maybe you'll find out when you get there. I don't know. I'm just trying to... I have no interest in entering a manor. I'm fine being able to bask in the sun. Sweet. I love that for you. I would hate it, but, like... No, you know what? Actually, the way that you said bask in the sun, that does actually sound nice. Okay, I feel that. Actually, I respect that. Cool. You may uh, want to put on actually, a bit of I'm clothing gonna... before you enter, boy. I'm sure it's fine, right? Is it that? Do you think it's that deep? I'll talk to the group. They'll, t they'll you know what? I, like, pull out some bacon and I hand it to Savar. I'm like, I don't know if this is interesting to you, but I don't think like the... She stretches out her tongue, grabs the bacon, just pulls it into her mouth. You think they're really going to be mad that I'm shirtless? Is it that? Is it like a? Is it a kind of a big deal? Considering. Honestly. Are you asking the group or her? I'm, I say it out loud, but I'm asking it towards Silvaro. So, but I it, it is out loud, so anybody could answer. You're about to meet the I most mean, powerful one of one of the most powerful nobles in the world. I think you're making a right. statement, and you should just own it. You Wendy, beautiful. listen. Okay, see, like, I feel like these are good, these are good things, right? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna keep the shirt off. We'll just, Be let's keep the shirt off. Be remember yeah, yeah. Remember exactly. <laughs> I know, you totally think. Be I was going, I think I was going right, to say you should dress for the occasion. This is a important people place and in people, important people person. You should wear important people clothes. However, I like what Wendy said about making statement so i like how everyone has that. different versions of wendy it's the wendy wendy or wendy i love it tremendously so uh well listen that it sounds like yeah it sounds like shirts are optional i'm gonna keep it off if uh if somebody has a strong opinion i mean like they'll probably tell me oh, draco's right? such a dude bro <laughs> Oh, maybe Aaron, Aaron, Aaron not, looks man. like he wants to say something, but he's not going to. Ladies, if you uh, saw I... this man walk in, you would remember him, right? I think he's asking Helia and Al. She has faded. <laughs> the silence is so loud. They I mean, he looks he, similar to a lot of the people in my fake court. We Shirts aren't really that much of a big deal there either, so... I go for sure. I, I just, I mean, listen, I'm going to take both of those as an astounding yes. So, uh, <laughs> we're good. Right? I would think, with a, I will say, a passive insight of a 15, can I tell that Aaron wants to say yeah. something and is not saying it? Absolutely. I'm going to turn to Aaron. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I can tell. <laughs> like, I feel like, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Aaron, what, yeah, what's up? Well, I mean, ultimately, it is... It, like, it, fully it, kitted up, you know? <laughs> it is your choice, ultimately. I, I know my preference, know. but your choice. Your choice. Great, so shirt's off. All right, sweet. I appreciate that, Aaron. Thank you. Tarp's uh, off, but... Completely misinterpreting. <laughs> <laughs> sweet. Uh, Amazing. I'm All so right, cool. Personally, Cole agrees with Draco because Cole thinks shirts are abominations upon this earth because they never fit. Because they never fit right. They're if, horrible and confined. Once you, that I get. Exactly. Once, once you have to learn how to tailor. Once you have muscles. No, I mean like regular shirts that you like buy. Like when you. Yeah. yeah you can listen, edit, listen. Yeah. I'm good with yeah. leather. I'm good with leather. I'm good with foam, and I am good with wood. I'm not good with sewing. <laughs> Can, that's a lot of that's a lot of habits that you have learned that you can learn more things. Sewing is basically the same as the others, just softer. Mm, yeah, softer. and less expensive. I tried sewing today, mm -hmm. and my hands are like my fingers are like. I know so I was so on so your so I was so on so your so chat so when so you were doing it. Were you hand sewing? His head's like he's like. I was like, this isn't working the way I thought. 
Okay, <laughs> failed, failed immediately. We're done. That's because hand, sti- hand stitching is awful. Ha- I have done some hand. Shit. You know what's worse? Hand stitching. Suturing leather. is better than hand stitching. Hand stitching leather is the worst. I like suturing oh, I better than hand stitching. That's why. I don't want to the, the, the vet in the chat speaks up. I like suturing. <laughs> it's, it's the same but different. Veterinarian, yeah. not veteran, I will point out. Veterinarian, yes, not I veteran. Not, I have no military experience. <laughs> but, uh, so, you guys enter Blitz Hall, and the guard stands there and he goes, Halt! And you remember the, what Gareth told you to say, and Draco, you are in the front, I assume. Dear God. I'll just, like, turn back again, shirtless, holding my bag, the halberd sort of sticking off, and I'm just, like, cast a little smile, and I'm like, Fuck off. <laughs> the guard looks really annoyed, and then you hear Gareth from just... <sighs> and the guard goes, shit, and immediately just, like, lets you pass. Gareth is standing at the top of the stairs looking annoyed. And standing with Let's him is... the guard is, a, a wink. And standing with him is a uh, paladin in full plates with about shoulder-length golden hair, short, well-groomed beard with a mat, with a huge sword on his back with a blue cloak. Uh, you rec- this is one of the two commanders of the um, Paladin organization that Draco is part of, the Order of the Platinum Light, Sir Kylan Wolfrun, sitting at the top, and he just looks over at, he's talking to Gareth, and Gareth is looking very annoyed, and he looks down, and he just smirks, Ah, uh, Draco, if your assignment, I take it. Yeah, yeah, we were just, yeah. Well, yeah, crew. Head, yeah. along, head along in. Edith is expecting you. At that moment, Gareth, Lady Blitz, is like, oh, shut the hell up. She's my mother-in-law. <laughs> like, Please, enter. She's waiting. I'll have Gareth ready for you to talk after after I'm done yelling at him. Aaron, Aaron, right like, bows. You guys as, have fun. As we, as we pass. It's Ka- a little Ka- like, just, oh, you whatever, I, like, what are you doing? Don't, I, don't, yeah, in, don't bow. I appreciate the res- <laughs> I appreciate the respect. I'm not that kind of lord. <laughs> oh, you... Okay. Kyla just looks good. Ours just, anyway. He <laughs> sighs. Oh. At least once more, Miss Swan. <laughs> he just looks at you all enter, and he just and under his breath, he says, "Why can no one from our organization find? We seem to find the weirdest friends, and just." As you all walk, he kind of opens the door for you. It's like, oh, Edith, your guests are here. Like, totally intentionally trying to annoy everybody. Gareth grumbles again, and he's like, oh, shut up, you big puppy. I think I'll actually wait as, like, the group passes by, and I'll kind of take up the rear, just to kind of make sure that, like, the, the as they pass by, the two, like... <laughs> Very fun members of my organization make snide comments that uh, that it's chill. Um, so I think whenever we enter the room, I'll actually be in the back. He just he's like, and he, his jovial demeanor kind of shifts as soon as none of us, and he looks down at you. He goes, Your assignment is quite important, Draco. I need you to promise me that you will complete it to the fullest. Listen, I don't fail. What are you worried about? There will be more. Once you're done, come talk to me. I have something else to assign to you. Alone. Yeah. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I'll come talk to you after we're done. Excellent. You gonna be here, or are you gonna be somewhere else? I will be up front, and I will lead you to someplace more private, and you can reconvene with your friends later. And he pats you, and he goes... I love that you're not wearing a shirt. This is going to be hilarious. And he pushes you in the room. Uh, <laughs> oops. Just, just, just strut to catch up to the group completely. Just shirtless. In the Adjust room, the satchel with like armor. Yeah. There is a long uh, rectangular table. You each have seats assigned to you. And sitting at the head of the table is a tall tiefling woman wearing an extravagant pink dress with curled, like, orange and blue horns with blue skin. She just sits. Welcome in, dears. Please sit down. Sit down. 
She mm-hmm. counts. Thank you. So we have quite apologies. I am Lady Edith Bliss, Baroness of the Bliss family and a Duchess of the Zillian Dynasty, heir to the Zillian Dynasty throne. And welcome. I see you met my bodyguard and also, unfortunately, my son-in-law at the door. Jesus. You know how they feel. I know, I know. I'm like, she's, now please. But she's so blunt about it. Jeez. She's, now, I see everyone I requested is here. Helia of the Spring Court. Hi, how, nice how, to meet you. How is Cedras? He's doing wonderful. Give me, I didn't know. A, give me an uh, insight check on her. I was just about to say, I didn't know you'd know. I know many people, darling. That's a uh, twenty-one. Even with a twenty-one. You get a ver a vibe of oh important person, but you can't tell exactly why. Okay. But you get this feeling, you get a kind of a little twinge of dread in the back of your mind when you look at her. Okay. Looks- kind of like shake it off, like smile, like falter for like half a second. I'm just like, oh, I didn't know you would know him. Um, not um, many people know the Fae Wild. I know plenty of people, darling. For example, when. Wendy, went who? How are you, darling? I'm fabulous. How are you? Always fabulous, darling. I appreciate your art so much, and she actually gestures behind, and she has... This is your mysterious benefactor who has purchased bulk orders of your glass. And it's all along her shelving. Uh-oh. Well, We're talking about where they making the money move. Nice, nice to meet face to face. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. You know, I did bring some uh, more uh, pieces along the way. Should you want to look at them before I? Mm, we'll talk personal business after we talk empire business, dear. I love personal business. And Aaron, I know your father quite well. You're muted. <laughs> There we go. I bow. Probably, probably, I go, I think Aaron goes, like, full, full, like, to one knee, head down, waits a beat, and then stands back up. Hmm. Seems you know your decorum. I wouldn't expect to know less from, well, you were raised by a man who knows his decorum. He was Spe- very insistent, my lady. <laughs> I know he was. Speaking of which, Sir Ulrich. How are you, young man? I am well. I'm just surprised you know who I am. I am very close friends with Lady Ashley. Oh, well, if you're friends with Lady Ashley, then, um, yeah, then I'd be happy to help you out. Of course, I'm sure the money doesn't hurt. Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, I can make more parties and feed more people and help more people out with more money, but you know, if I can help uh, my lady Ashling, uh, a friend of hers, friend of mine. She just looks you over and looks over to your group. Is he always this precious? Wholesome. Yeah, actually, yeah. I actually swore like a life oath. (laughs) I'll be dead. And Brutus will be dead before he's dead. So, which is saying a lot because they just don't live super long. She just looks over. Oh, Sir Draco. She really looks at your chest for a second, looks up. Decided against clothing today, did we? Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like... She looks slightly annoyed. I wear a shirt. She's like... I I thought... I didn't realize I was hiring one of Kylan's men. I thought I was hiring one of Gideon's men, but... Well, you say that like you're disappointed. She looks, uh, she goes, why? Well, it's, you know what? Roll me a persuasion check on just the, you know what? Or since it's the bod, I'll let you roll me a athletics check for how rock, for how good the bod is. That's uh 21. She goes, I am impressed. 
In fact, if you succeed on this mission, I may have a few daughters to introduce you to. (laughs) 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 For those of you who have seen Ruka Samuels take out, this is Felicity's mom. (laughs) I will say, too, that I'm clicking in my brain, in Draco's uh, sorely underpowered brain. Uh, I am <laughs> clicking with the fact that I have now a connection to who uh, Lady Ashlyn is. Because earlier I was like, oh, okay, that's probably somebody that you could swear a pretty solid oath to. And now I'm like, okay, so they're just like a friend? I'm not sure what Ulrich's like paladin order is. Do you want now. to give so an in- do you want to give an insight check to Ulrich the nature of Ulrich's oath? I I do think I want to give it yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let me do an insight check really fast. <laughs> That's a nine. nine. Something's I will say something's off about it. It feels celestial in nature, but you can't put your finger on why it doesn't feel like any oath you've felt before. Like Petey, I think that with like the the fact that he was earlier like, yeah, I don't, I can't use heavy armor. It just gets in the way, and like all the, I'm like. But then I'm just kind of like, I don't know. And then <laughs> Edith turns her attention, and she looks very, Menethil. I did not realize. I was hoping you'd be here. How are you, darling? Uh, did you say Menethil? Is that how it's pronounced? I don't know how it's pronounced. Menithiel. Menithiel, okay. Menithiel, yeah. darling. Are you talking about me? Uh, this whole time, I was just, like, tapping her, like, fingers on the table, and she just looks very impatient and just keeps staring at Edith. <laughs> and then she goes, like, uh, Edith? Edith Bliss? From the letter? Yes, I do have... We have much to talk about when you return from this mission I send you on, darling. Let's just say, uh, your closest friend and I, we have a lot between us. And you hear in your head, she's looking right at you, I know who the voice in your mind is that makes, that forces you to kill. Just like watching the silent eye contact, like... Something intense is going on here. <laughs> well, from Lady Bit, Bliss's perspective, it just looks like she's looking at her just kind of like normally. Because obviously she's pretty pro at this kind of thing. And she looks around at all of you, does not maintain eye contact with Elle. And as she's talking out loud, she's talking telepathically to Elle with different words. And so she goes, The person in your mind who forces you to kill is a bit different than you thought. It's not you. It's nothing to do with you as a person. You were the result of, let's just say you were the price of a pact. And she's just kind of staring at her like... Meanwhile, out loud to the rest of you, she's just kind of exchanging more pleasantries. And she goes, I can do many things, darling. Many things you would not believe. Let's just say, I'll give you a name. For who's in your mind. Alagos. And then, um, as soon as she hears that name, Elle pulls out her journal and, like, frantically writes that name into her, uh, notes. And I have reason to believe he's... He's behind what I've hired you for. (gasps) Possibly. So if I do this, then I can get rid of it? Perhaps. And perhaps even, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm not going to tell you everything without you doing something for me first. That's as well as it gets, I guess. <laughs> so you said that well, but this whole time she's... That... And she's talking out loud and she goes, Now, for, the re- for all of you, it's very nice to meet you all. And some of you I've heard much about, some of you very little. And some of you, I'm just very excited to hear about your exploits when you come back. I have reason to believe... Is she saying this, like, very, like, generic stuff? I see Elle, like, scribbling in the notebook for just a second, and I just sort of... (laughs) 
Oh no, you probably don't have to write that down. I don't think that's super. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's okay. That's that's crazy. Somebody knows, knows us. Like, uh, I'm like, yeah, no, it's probably like with cool. The crazy I don't eye. think we're gonna have to. And then, uh, <laughs> we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> the, and then the voice come, leaves L's head and goes, and she goes, now. Nah. And each of you get five, four thousand more gold plopped in front of you. Each of us? Yeah. Can when we, you return... Like four or eight? five thousand? Four. Four. And she says, when you return, you'll get an extra twenty-five. Huh? Can well, I ask Matt, why? The, the, because the mission I'm sending you on is an extremely dangerous one, and each person who spoke up in name of your skills touched you up very highly. I have reason to believe that these recent disappearances, these murders, and the reason that the bodies are disappearing is because someone has found a way to access the other realms without tearing open the fabric of reality, which should be impossible. Does that sound like what happens when I went to the, from the Feywild to the material plane is ripping uh, open no. the fabric of reality? There are, there are distinct <laughs> gates to certain realms, but some realms okay. have been completely cut off, and like some realms... You have to use specific methods. She was, okay. I have reason to believe that the realm that connects all realms has reawakened. And that the chasm is active. And there's someone in the chasm trying to cause havoc across the world. And, as some of you know, there is a... Right when the world is at its most volatile... There's a war brewing between Kimora and Eredel. There's a civil war brewing in the kingdom of Eredel, led by, and excuse me, Justice Draco, Draco's commanding officer, Sir Gideon. He is leading an uprising to dethrone King Ulthros. Helios' brain is just like kind of... Do, 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 do. And, then the, and then in the Feyre... Like awkwardly and, smile. And for those of you who... And for you, Helia, there is a civil war brewing beneath, between the Fey. Do I know that? You wouldn't in that, like, like shot. Yeah, like, oh, I'm like, hello? <laughs> the winter and... The winter and autumn courts are going to be declaring war against the spring and summer. Oh, what? That's interesting. That can't be good. I, like, turned to look at Helia for a second. I'm just like... She looks very confused. Don't worry, though. Like, very there, immediate there are some... shock of... The over here? There <laughs> are some... The High Queen is trying to do her best to dissuade the Civil War, but she won't actively stop it. And some of the Fey are trying to stop it, but this person causing Roman that I believe is using the Chasm to cause problems is doing it in all the realms. Killing powerful people and kidnapping powerful people. And that's where I need your help. One of my daughters has been kidnapped and taken to the Chasm. I need her returned. Alive and healthy, and I can sense she is still alive because of a bond we share. If my daughter, what if this my daughter, chasm is the chasm is the realm between realms, a realm where every realm spills into a little bit. When the great shattering of the realms happened, that's where the dra the drow were initially banished before they made their way to here to Midgard. Some still remain there and are not really the most pleasant of folks. There's also a lot of dangerous creatures. And hmm. a former arch okay, sounds pretty sweet. And a former... Oh, okay, and a, wait a the, minute. Uh, hold on. <laughs> a former arch and former arch devil who were banished there. feels like I think a takeaway and I don't know that this is something I should tell you particularly but maybe like if you know somebody we could tell maybe like just banishing all of the worst things into the same spot is not like an awesome strategy oh yes I will direct I, I will direct that statement to a Don yes I have him on speed dial darling she shakes her head she goes amazing perfect he does though <laughs> yeah, right. Like again, it just store store with right, insider right. knowledge is like I mean maybe yes. <laughs> now she's just being sassy for no reason. And I have reason to believe my daughter was taken to 
rile up people in this realm. Considering she's currently engaged to the Emperor of Kamora, that would be a problem. The engagement's not Pretty final, sure but it is an to. awful... He's one of her possible options. So all we gotta do is go down here, find your daughter, and bring her back, right? That's yes. Easy. Great. Bring my daughter back on home, right. you will receive the 25,000 gold, come back without her, and you had best get out of my sight before I kill you. Or bring me evidence of what happened to her. That's fair. I think we can all do that. Yeah, I think that's easy. Yeah, done. I mean, look, Scott, look, are you kidding me? Look at the crew. Look at the crew. We're good. <laughs> we got this. Yes, Gideon did hype up your expertise as a pa as a warrior. Kylan seconded that cutting. Sedras tells me a lot about you, Helia. And I'm very familiar with dear L's skip abilities. The other three of you, oh, I you simply have heard you. through the grapevine of your skills. Do you have any questions for me? Um, what does she look like? My daughter Rena is a, a is question. a high elf. Um, all of my daughters are adopted except for one. Uh, Rena has long raven black hair with golden eyes. She will likely yeah. be wearing a purple dress, as is her favorite color, and she's extremely beautiful. Hmm. Do you have a portrait of her? Yeah. That I she does see? hold up a portrait, and I actually can put that. I don't know if I have. I have one on my computer. I don't think I have one on my phone, but I'll put one in the chat for you guys as well. I think I have hmm. one. She is Saint Yennefer from The Witcher vibes, kind of, just instead of purple eyes, gold eyes. Hmm. So, super attractive. And she shows you that. And she is, to a lot of you, probably one of the most beautiful women you have seen. But also Lady Edith is also, like, stunning knockout. The Lady Bliss does... Basically all of her adopted daughters are smoke show 10 out of 10s. <laughs> we'll rescue all the right. princess, alright. Don't even worry about <laughs> it. We got it. We got it. Don't Based worry. On... Um, if you on there are some others who were sent down to retrieve them, we have not heard back. Lesser, we thought we could catch her quickly. So, find out what happened to them. More money for you. Now, mm. I have found a way. I have some friends. They have opened a door to the castle, and I can guide you all to it. Tomorrow morning, or tonight, if you are ready to set out, we can have you set out tonight. Mm. Gar Gareth will lead you there, actually, and you will go in. Uh, we, my lady, we had discussed possibly uh, buying transportation, possibly <laughs> horses or a cart. Uh, it certainly seems from where we are going that uh, this will be mainly foot travel, am I correct? A horse and cart would not do well down in the chasm. It's another realm of existence, I, can't, I don't know much about it, frankly, but... It's best to be used. We travel light. Which, Wendy, if you're willing to offload all of the glass you brought, I can certainly entertain and entertain some pricing. I would definitely like it in safe hands. Hmm. Well, we'll talk after I send. We'll talk later. Now. We like whisper to Ulrich. I'm like, can I borrow some money so I can buy that shield? Oh, oh yeah. The... Oh. How much was it? I think I need like, yeah, probably six on five hundred, six hundred. I'll give you the change, and then you can hold the shield if you want to, like a couple of times. <laughs> No, I don't need it. I mean, I have this one. It catches arrows. There are so many arrow holes in that shield. Bless his heart. I grab him, yeah. both hands to his face. I grab him. 
I'll die for you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, you say that. So, Legion goes, now, if there's no other questions, I ask that you leave me in peace. I need to meet with my daughters who are present. Um, Elle will attempt to come up to Edith and uh, hmm. ask her for uh, a conversation in private. <laughs> As we're leaving, I'll turn to Aaron. I'm like, wait, did, did she say what her daughter's name was? Did I miss that? Uh, Rena. Rena. R e n a. Completely forgot. She did say. No, I, I did say her, her daughter Rena. It's uh, important to me that I know the name. You know what I mean? Oh, like, and one more. And one more thing, all of you. I got you. That daughter of mine is second in line to my. Well, my duchy. If anything should happen to my oldest daughter, she'll be the heir. Now, I don't foresee anything happening to Farah, but if anything happens to Rena, I will be sorely cross. As you should. Listen, don't even worry about it, okay? Rena's coming home. Promise. <laughs> Just look at Storm's face. <laughs> so much has happened to Farah. <laughs> This is a year before the campaign that Storm was one of my regular players. <laughs> yeah. So. Knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Always. That's my life in the general. Forbidden, so. The forbidden knowledge. I think so Storm. Knowledge, Storm has played but. Storm has played but in all but one of my streamed campaigns, and I think all but two of my one shots. Well, that have been yeah. with other content creators because anytime I ask her, I'm like, hey, you down? She's like, yeah. <laughs> this is my most of my life when I'm not working. It's just TTRPGs. People's talking and Storm's just like, you're not the only one cursed with knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Storm is like, I have so many things to tell Ruka. <laughs> no, Storm's usually pretty good about keeping secrets. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I knew that Strat. <laughs> No, you're horrible. You keep <laughs> telling me secrets for my own campaign. I'm like, why are you giving yeah, me Yeah, but they're not for your character. <laughs> yes, you do. So, you all leave anyway. except for uh, L, And she goes, all right, dear. And you guys see the same pink tiefling force. She goes, Felicity, dear, dear. Give, give your mother just a couple minutes. And Felicity just glares at Wendy. She goes, I really would like... To yell at you, but I'll get in trouble. And then she just storms off, pulls out a pink journal, and starts writing in it. <laughs> like whisper to Wendy, I'm like, "Yo, that's the tiefling you were mean to, isn't it?" Uh, women, am I right? I don't know. Since Ruka's not here, I'll do it for her. She's not here to do it. <laughs> the Ruka special. Uh, and she's guided by another. Uh, woman out the door and she's like we'll talk to her later and then Elsie goes very well and she kind of smiles puts a head on your shoulder her eyes glow orange and you and her are teleported to your spiritual bodies are teleported to another plane of existence what and she sprouts orange wings and she sits down on a throne of leaves oh no okay <laughs> Hello. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I suppose I should actually introduce myself. Uh-oh. My name is Yavana. I'm the Archfey of the Autumn Court. Yo! <laughs> What's up? It is, Sorry, this is a, uh, just a, just a game I play in the mortal realm. I like to play chess with mortals' lives. Speaking oh. of, your target, Alagos. All I will tell you. Can you spell that? A L A G O S. All I'll tell you is he is in. He's half fae, half devil. I don't. What does that mean? Great. Half fae, half devil. Devil. I thought you said devil. I'm like, no, what's no, a devil? Devil. <laughs> half fae, half devil. Specifically, Deckle. half arch fae. His father was an arch fae. And his mother was an arch devil. Okay. And I believe he's the one who's taken my daughter out of petty, being petty towards me. So I need you to kill him as painfully as possible. But how do you kill a devil? 
<laughs> Helia looks distraught at that description of the job. You're not here, Helia. Oh! It's just I it's L. all of us. No, it's just L. Oh! It's just L. Oh. <laughs> so okay. she goes, like, I need what? you to... She doesn't know what to do with herself. She has never seen anything like this before I in her life. I need you to kill to him painfully, slowly, and I'd like you to bring me his eyes. His eyes. Oh. Spicy. I need a trophy. <laughs> okay. So before uh, I give give you his eyes or even attempt to retrieve them, I need you to help me with one thing. Mm -hmm. Every night I do my trance thing. It's like I lose control and I wake up in a pool of blood most of the time with a blood of Just come here. someone close to me. Come here, dear. She comes up to you slowly. and just She goes, leans in and whispers and she goes, And that's exactly why I need you. I am going to... And she taps you on the forehead. And now you will have the opportunity to make a charisma saving throw to not kill people in your sleep. But, hey, listen. Was, but Great. all of that blood thirst, all of that blood thirst will be let loose the second you see him. Charisma saving throw 27. I'll just tell you, make, I'll just be like, make a charisma saving throw every night. Yeah. You can still fail. Just keep that in mind. Okay. She's going to do it now. Oh, so now I, I don't have to murder. I just have to make a throw. You have a chance to not murder. <laughs> And and for I just made yours squirrels instead of a tiefling bard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's as close as I've ever gotten to solving my issue. Thank you. I will bring and you his once, eyes. And then once you're done, I'll have an offer to make, dear. What is the offer? You'll find out later. And then she snaps, and you're back in the midgard, and she's gone. Can I ask a question? Sure. As a fae of the Autumn Court, do I... Is there any sort of, like, inkling that there is that sort of magic present here? Like Give me an insight check. Don't fail me now, Dice. Come on, please. I'm begging you. That is... An... Uh, Eleven. Something's there's something. The passive is a fifteen, though. Because you say I don't know that okay. I'm like fully checking her out. There's I think something. That I there, there's definitely something fucky going on here with uh, Lady Edith, but you can't really tell what because you've been gone for so long. Like you're kind of detached from Fey magic. You get an inkling. There's nothing concrete, and you're like something in the back of your head is just pull it. Something off. And speaking of uh, L, in your vo in your head now, you hear Edith. And if you tell anyone my true identity, darling, you'll drop dead. She doesn't say anything. I'm gonna, slow... <laughs> I'm gonna drop dead. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll drop that. <laughs> so... Good girl. I'm gonna slow up in a. I think. Um... I guess I'll go to Helia. I feel like I keep going to Helia a lot, but I'm like... Yeah, it's the tracks. Was there... Did you... I... There's something... Right? Did you get... Or maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. I thought there I... was something, though. Yeah, I... I couldn't get, like, a true vibe of what was going on, but something... Something about her feels familiar, almost. That's what I was gonna say, and I don't. And a little bit unnerving. I don't get to say to that a lot. Re well, that for sure. She definitely mm -hmm. had like a way of saying everything that felt like it was an attack, which felt unnecessary considering yeah. we were working for her. Right. right? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, we're on the same team, but also it felt like we were not on the same team. Like it felt like I she wanted so to kill us. Here and... for no reason. I'm feeling that as well, which is mm. strange because I feel like we've been really nice. But uh, yeah. yeah, I was just—it's weirding me out because I'm like, you know, I. I I don't know. Like I'm not 
Hey, been Russell. home in, in a minute. Rusty's been nice. Rusty has been nice. Rusty was actually an absolute G, and so was Buddy. Everybody yeah. in the tavern was an absolute G. That's fair. Uh, but I don't, I don't but like. I don't know about any wars. Cedrus told me nearly everything, and he hasn't said anything about this. Why would? As, yeah. at you mentioning his woman name, no, and not me. At the mentioning of his name, he just kind of poofs between the two of you. About that, um. He boops you on the nose. We'll talk, okay. we'll talk later. I promise I'll tell you almost everything. Almost. Okay. He then gives you a little forehead kiss and goes, Okay, love you, bye. And then disappears. This is like reverse Jester and Artagon. It's reverse yeah. Jester and Artagon where like, he's the super bubbly one and she's bye. like... Oh. No, it's just Jester Jester. <laughs> <laughs> just two Jester. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway. I guess we'll maybe get yeah, some answers tonight. Really... Yeah, I didn't really think about the Feywild doing war with itself, to be honest. No. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna hang on to that. Um. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna, like, catch up to the group. I'm like, do you think I have... Time to run back to the armor shop. At that moment, you hear a... <laughs> He's like, Oi! Draco! And you see Kylan kind of waving at you. Come here. Oh, right, yeah, listen, I get... Yeah, I'll be right back. Uh, He's like, I got you a... Over. He's like, I got you a present, too. What'd you... What, <laughs> what did you get? What? He's like, the animated, the animated shield <laughs> floats up behind his shoulder. I went to the armory and heard you were looking. He goes, consider it an advance on your payment from the from the order. And the he just pushes it towards you. You can come up with your own command word. But listen, we need to, we need to I talk. Get it. We need to talk in private. Uh, right? Yeah. I'll just sort of like it just like starts floating behind my back. Uh, and uh, but yeah, no, I'll I'll walk away uh, to join him in private. He uh. He's like, get on, get on to Brutus, and he mounts his dragon. Yeah, I mount Brutus. We'll talk in the sky. So the rest of your party watches as these two dragon riding knights just fly off. And you can tell Brutus is trying his hardest to keep up with the silver dragon. He's like, <laughs> we'll just stay here then. And you telepathically communicate with Kylan. He goes, now. It's a very good. So you guys are up there. You're not super high. I tell that you just I have an unfortunate request, order, if you will. Um. Yeah. Shoot. What? There are there are two people in your party that you need to keep a very close eye on, due to their affiliation with certain entities. Okay. You're not um, going to like done. it. Okay, I don't love that we're leading with that. What's up? Who who am I keeping an eye on? Aaron's father has a very troubled history with Sir Gideon. I can't reveal too much. That's you. Okay. Listen, Jake, don't you shake your head at me. You gave me an opening. You gave me an open backstory with that guy. I'm on the bench. <laughs> don't you know you're never on the bench? My mic is muted. Let me react. <laughs> so, uh, he goes, he, but he's not the one I'm most concerned with. Uh, after seeing him getting, let's just say, listening in a bit. Sorry, had a little, I may have had a little bug in the room when you were talking. I think he, even though he didn't say much, he seems trustworthy. So I'm not too worried about him. Gideon just has bad blood with his father. Sure. Ulrich on the other hand. Okay, well, I mean... His... What's wrong with him? He's not a paladin. What he truly knows about his page, his patron is unknown. She is indeed celestial. She used to be a devil.
and she's oh now celestial, but her past can't right. be forgotten. She's done terrible things, and we just need to make sure that she's not going back on those terrible things into doing those things. Let's just say we uh, have reason to believe the being in the chasm is some used to be her boss. Okay. Um, if, okay, if Ulrich's not a paladin, what is he? I don't even think he realizes that he's a warlock. I think um, Durga's face falls at that, um, I which am... is, I think, a pretty rare instance. There's not a whole lot of stuff. Kylan that sees really that and goes, Durga, but that's why. I have no doubt that the boy is an outstanding lad. I just worry about things his patron will ask him to do if confronted by her old miss master. So just keep an eye on him. You don't need to hurt him. You don't need to imprison him. We're not asking anything of that. Of just if right. yeah. the worst should happen, we present you on this because you, have a, you do not hesitate. And we need that from you. If the worst yeah, should happen. Uh, you got my word. I won't hesitate. Good lad. Now. Please do your best to find my sister-in-law. My wife is actually... They don't really get along, but she's still, oh, yeah. she's still upset. For sure. I think we'll... I think we'll track her down. Don't worry about that. Good. Now I'll let's go back down. Let's probably return to your friends. And do not reveal anything of what I've told you as, as per usual rules. Only secrets. And I I truly believe that Ulrich is a good lad, as is Aaron, but just keep an eye on Ulrich in particular. And enjoy your new shield. I appreciate it. Yeah, hey, don't worry. I got you. Oh, um, and the boy, the blacksmith's son, he said yeah. he said yeah. you talked to him. I did? Yeah. Write that letter as soon as you can, and I'll corroborate the story. Do. 100%. He deserves a spot. I did promise I'd let him pet Sylvie here, so I'm heading back there. You rejoin your friends. Take some time to get some food, relax, before your f Gareth leads you where you need to go. Gareth. Yeah. All right. Cool. And he, you two fly back down, land in front of your friends again. He dispenses dragon pets her. He gives Brutus chin scratches because he knows Brutus likes them. Brutus says, oh. ah, Yes, my two favorite people are here. The chin scratchers. I can't remember who was the one who gave him chin stretches? Was that Ulrich last session? Yeah. yeah. So Ulrich oh, and Kylan nice. are his other two favorite people because they know the chin spot. <laughs> and Kylan just looks over to Ruby's like, I've, I've had him for long enough. Don't let him. Don't let this one die. And he looks at the group. We kind of need him. Keep him safe. Lance will. He's going to kill me. Uh, Kylan is also just ever so slightly more buff. <laughs> Draco just ever so slightly he's got bigger arms it gets noticeable slightly and he's, but definitely and he's also he's on, like, he's on oh, the bigger. he's he's on the one. yo what are you trying to say hold on what are you trying to say Jake <laughs> I didn't say what the juice was <laughs> it's orange it's, on the juice. it's, it's, it's orange juice Listen, we're, don't we're call orange juice. Don't you okay. don't you accuse yeah. Drake, don't you Drake, Drake, that's fine. don't you accuse myself in of being on steroids? <laughs> yeah, okay. Listen, I got I got no issues. Listen, and he just kind of <laughs> and he's also six two, so just slightly. <laughs> it's uh, like an inch taller and like an inch wider, an inch in every direction. It's like, oh, man, just got me beat all across the by just enough. Drake plus one. So. 
Draco he's also yeah, right, a little bit, a little Draco. bit strong. He's also <laughs> a little bit, he's also a little bit stronger. But he just kind of looks and he goes, and if you all need anything, and he hands you a sending stone. I don't know if these work between realms, Draco, but if you need one, call me if things get a little too hairy for you. I'm gonna... <laughs> Good one. And I'll stick it in my uh, pack, sort of like cinch it back, throw it over my shoulder again. Um, yeah, hey, listen, thank you for the um, for the advice. I appreciate it. Uh, and I'll pass it on. Oh, and all the stuff that's useful. So he, he looks at the rest of the group and he goes, and don't let Edith get under your skin. She's mostly all bark. It's a blessing. Elle just goes like, knowing <laughs> <laughs> what she knows. He goes right, and he goes, "Go on, go on, Syl. We need to go well, talk to that boy." And the dragon marches down the street. People are like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so you guys have choices. You can go back and buy more things, or you can go. And now that you have the shield, you could look at some of that really nice armor if you really wanted to. Or he might have better halberds too. <laughs> I'm gonna turn, turn back. I think uh, there is also that magic item shop y'all could go to. Uh, I would love to go to a magic item shop. Yeah. Which yeah. which Draco would have. So the magic item shop could also have magic weapons and armor. I'm going to. I think. Yeah, if we're going to the magic item shop, I'm down for going to the magic item shop. Yeah. Before we the... before we go shopping and into the chasm. We're going to take a little 15 minute break, so for all of you watching at home, it'll be like two minutes, but for the rest of us, we're going to take a s small break to bathroom break, hydrate, all the thing, and this is the benefit of pre-recording, <laughs> so we will see you all after the break.
Hello, everyone hey. watching at home. Welcome back to Shadows of the Chasm in the Realms of Alivar. Uh, where we left off, Elle got basically a lot thrown at her, and your camera positions just changed for some reason, but it's fine. You're still in blocks. It's fine. <laughs> I don't have your names on them yet, so it's okay. Um, Elle got uh, told, hey, that voice in your head, it's not you. It's someone actively forcing you to kill people. And, uh... Draco found out that Ulr he has to keep an eye on his beloved Ulrich. And if things go for the worst, he might have to smite him. He's my brand new base on my favorite human boy. <laughs> <laughs> and boy. Wendy found out that her bully is in town. It's and he totally stole from I love, her. I love that rundown. It's like there's a voice in your head making you kill people, and he might have to kill his best friend. And Wendy's bully is in town. <laughs> and, 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 and he's sick. And Aaron, he's upset about glass. And Aaron bowed to a guy, what, and the guy went. What you as and, the? <laughs> and Aaron basically had that Black Panther scene. We don't do that here. <laughs> and Healy is just. Luckily, I didn't ask. Healy is just vibing. <laughs> Bows again. With the the good and bad vibes that have been popping up for them. There's been a lot of vibes. There have been a lot of vibes. There it's are session. no good and bad it's, vibes. It's there session one. There's a lot of roleplay and a lot of lore dumping. And then you guys go into the shadowy place. They get a pass. Which, by the way, it's even though it is Sorry, Jimbo, the I chasm, to the it's, I need to clarify, it's the chasm. It's not like the Underdark. It's a separate realm of existence. It's got a sky and everything, but... It's very dark. Going to the Shadow Realm there, Jimbo. No, that would be the Shaded Realm. That's a different place entirely. <laughs> That's where the vampire but is. But, the, but you're telling me there is a Shadow Realm. Yeah. We can send people to if we have the right trap card. <laughs> it's ruled by Cindy's last character's god. <laughs> oh, I miss Poe. Just... Poe was great. I loved Poe. Everyone else just had problems with Poe, but I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Ruka's character. Ruka's character had it was like, hmm. The second Poe showed up was like, I don't like you. <laughs> so, now, you all have been brought back together, and you have options to go shopping again or go directly to the chasm. And I know some of you, I know in particular Draco was like, I have all this money, and that armory had some cool shit. But also, there's the magic item shop. Yeah, everybody was like, we want magic items. So I'm like, ooh, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Oh, let's check that out. So I'm going to pull my... Pull out my out little bit. I want this gold Edgy. burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> Are you eating dreams? I'll spend it. Let's say dreams. Yes. It does. <laughs> I turned down the notes. She's just consuming dreams. Snacking on dreams. <laughs> Sounds like a fake. Sounds like fake shit. Sounds like It's a man. A man. The pizza box. I really it. like it when Honestly, it's more that's how Storm would get gotten by a mimic is if it took the shape of a pizza box. <laughs> oh. There has been. Honestly, a, it might be worth it. There has been mean? one yeah. uh, chibi fan art made of her character Nyx, Nyx. in Rivera, and it's Nyx eating pizza because Storm always eats pizza on Rivera Day. I'm so happy. <laughs> It's actually, honestly, it's so adorable to have like a sp like. Okay, I'm gonna play. D &D I have an emote have specifically pizza. of my druid eating pizza, and it makes me so happy. Cindy, it was gonna either be that one or the horse. <laughs> oh, horse six. Uh, in session one of that campaign, one of the characters looked at Storm's character Nix. What do you think, Nix? While they were wild shipped into a horse, Nix just went. <laughs> just a little horse noises. <laughs> so. Off to the wizard tower, then. You guys find yourself before the Wizarding Academy in Kamora and the Tower of Ericus. At the front, there is a little sigil where you can put a stone in to gain entry. I want to put the coin in. You put the coin in. And the runes shift and move on the door, and you open the door, and magically it teleports you to a shop. Basically, whatever coin you put in takes you to what certain area. Ooh. Individually and, or as a group? As a group, you are all brought to this magic shop. There is a. Uh, it's just Goodbye! Draco. Like, <laughs> yeah, just Draco. Just... Our way in. And at this shop, there is a young, there's a satyr woman looking at things frantically, and she's just skinning through books, and she looks up, Oh, 
hello, dearest. I'll be there with you in a moment. And she's just looking through all the books. And she looks up. She's got these goggles on that are just like magnifying her eyes to you guys. Aww. She pulls them up. Hello, hello, hello. She runs up. She clip clops up to the front. Shakes all your hands. It gets to Healy and goes, oh, Could they trouble you for one of your hairs? You know why everyone's asking me that? Uh, because you're a moth fae and you're not coming here. But this seems like a reoccurring thing that I've never had to experience before. Is it those bitches at the apothecary shop? They seem very nice. They don't. They wouldn't know true artisans work if it bit them on the ass. That's what I was saying. I like you. Give, the, give this woman your hair. Give this woman your hair. <laughs> Do we, can up. we exchange something? Sure, sure, whatever. Deal? My name's Rospilla. What's yours? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Helia, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And she just goes, I can give you... probably couldn't give you any of my items for it, but I could give you a discount. Okay. For everything, if you want. Sounds like a deal. She pops That's, the hair. I'm, I'm stealing your accent on accent. Oops. <laughs> Accent bleed. <laughs> she just runs so much. I haven't really figured out Healy is as it is, so it's she just, just like I'm just. She, she goes like this. <laughs> it's just make it a thing. This hair's perfect. And then she runs over and puts it in a little vial, and just tucks it in her little coat pocket for later. What are you gonna do with it? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to like run experiments. <laughs> I'm going to take a trip to I'm the like... room and visit some friends and run some experiments there. What, um, court? Oh, well, I've got friends in the winter, autumn, and spring. Or, sorry, summer, autumn, and spring. I don't like the Archfey of the Winter Court. He's a bit of a jackass. Mm. It, if you know people there, why don't you ask, why do you need me? Because you're a Mothfey who's entered Midgard, which makes that your, your vibe has shifted, let's say. <laughs> no, you smell wonderful, dear. Yeah, I like look over. In fact, all of you smell great. In fact, all of you smell great except for this young man. Points to Aaron because he never like showered or anything after his workout. It's except this young man. I, I, I doth protest. (laughs) I would have washed. Would have washed. He's a proper young man. He would (laughs) would have washed. (laughs) Have decorum. I could have sweaty to people. I think it fit because he kitted up, right? So I think he washed and then kitted up and then put his arm on his arm. If anything, it's the face. It's his his kit doesn't fit. The night before, laying out. You know what? Fine, but I'm not gonna take that shit. She's gonna point at Ulrich. She goes, "A human boy, a human boy." She runs over and just starts like diddling with everything. Can I have one of your hairs? I've never seen a human in person. Alive, at least. I'm gonna, like, st- I was, like, step between them, like, um, Ulrich, are you cool with this happening right now? Uh, this- I'm not sure. I've never had someone ask for me. Ask- last yeah. time I was in, last time I was in Midgard, oh. humans were I'll being killed. I'm like, Listen, uh, I appreciate your interest, but uh, Ulrich's going to have to make that decision independently of your meddling. Oh, so, fine. Uh, until that... Yeah, she sorry. Clip clops back behind the counter, and she goes, You're Autumn Fae, aren't you? Yeah. Like, oh. sort of, like, a little bit, like, stands taller, and, like, the <laughs> leaves sort of, like, take on a brighter color as uh, somebody's recognized. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. Interesting. She pulls oh, uh, or- Oric gives uh, Draco like an appreciative like tap on his shoulder, like, "Hey, yeah, thanks. That <laughs> that, that that was nervous. That uh, what what was that? Thank you. I don't sorry, know. sorry, sorry, sorry. I get I get a little uh, I get a little bit excited when I see creatures I don't normally mess with. So I question. I've been very specific with my wording every time I've made this agreement. <laughs> she uh sits behind her counter. She goes, "So you're looking for items then?" Mm. Yeah. Anything in particular, or would you like me to just throw things at you? Well, if you throw them at us, we don't have to buy them, do we? Y- you, I meant to show I them. We still have to buy them. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. She's like, I could, and she just snaps in a, like, huge tub of rings fall down. We can look at rings first. Hmm. Let's see. Use another ring. What kind of rings do you have? Uh, I have. She has from uncommon to legendary rings in this bucket. 
The rings. I I could use one ring. A ring. <laughs> she goes. I got maybe, this one. Maybe, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I I was thinking perhaps a ring that can store charges of a spell in it. She goes. Oh, I do have a ring of spell storing. She pulls out like a double fingered ring with runes inscribed across it. Oh yeah, these are very useful. You can store up to five levels of spells in them. Ooh. That seems nice. She goes, yeah, watch, there's one in it right now. And she, like, opens, she puts a rune in the door, opens it, and you see a realm cloaked in, like, shadow and darkness. And she uses the ring and a fireball shoots out, and she closes the door real quick and redoes the runes. And you go back. To... Okay, good, we're back in Midgard. Didn't want you guys to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that seems like a really good spell to have. Uh, oh, the, sorry, the I, just, I just used it, but if one of your friends wants to put Fireball in there, you could use it again. I could do that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will be about 1,200 yeah, yeah. gold. That's a bargain. Just, like, give a, a Fireball to everyone. <laughs> what could go wrong? She only has one. <laughs> hmm. Do you have any uh, capes? Uh, I do. I have plenty of... Well, I have a few things. I could look at my... Let's look here. And she pulls out a box full of assorted, what look like wondrous items. And so I got a few cloaks here, I think. Hmm. Uh, if you just want to be fancy, I can just give away this cloak of billowing for free. All it does is, if you, if you wanted to, it just flares dramatically. That one day. Amazing. <laughs> Here you go. She throws it at Wendy. You now have a cloak of billowing. Amazing. Immediately. <laughs> uh, she goes, Did you have a specific oh, cloak? Work for you, Wendy. Do you have a specific thing in mind, lad? Oh. Oh, well, I think hmm. I. Oh yeah, Ulrich. If you're thinking about a cloak as well, yeah, go ahead. Oh, actually, I already have a cloak of protection. I got one of those. I also have a Great. cloak of displacement, a cloak of elven kind, a cloak of protection. I have this weird one that this guy who smelled like brimstone gave me. He pulls up a cloak what is what looked like is made of hellhound fur. What does that do? Uh, she examines it. Oh, you can turn into a hellhound for an hour if you wear it. Oh wow. I mean that. So you can turn into a hellhound, and no, it functions as the po it functions as the polymorph spell. I can't say that that doesn't sound fun. Mm. Um, temp okay, I'm tempted. How much is it though? The hellhound cloak, thirteen hundred. Yeah. Or if you want a cloak of displacement, I can give you that for a thousand. Cloak of protection for eight hundred. I got a cloak of invisibility yeah, as well. That's two thousand. Two thousand for a cloak of invisibility. But that do could you, be nice. Do you, think, do you think we should buy that and then just give it to anyone in the party that needs it for any given sort of situation? Sure. Do you have it in uh, autumn colors? She it's it invisible. Up, like an orange. It's not invisible until you activate well, it's it. It's not always invisible. <laughs> she like points that's, at it and turns it into the. Per she turns it into the exact same color your mind was thinking of. Okay, yeah, it's just, like less now because of what it does, and more so because it perfectly matches his aesthetic. Uh, yeah, I think I could probably part with two thousand gold for that for sure. Okay, so, lad. You said you said two thousand. Yeah. So yeah. I can put in a thousand, and then you can put in another. It's okay. Thousand. It'll. I'll just put in two thousand. It'll just be mine, and then you guys can borrow it if you want to. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I just feel like it's like it's you know, this is the right color. I just you know, I, I don't want anybody to be like, hey, it's like you know, it's like half mine because it's not because I wanted to anyway. I like immediately mm. put two thousand gold and like slide it over, and then very dramatically, sort of like throw on the coat to see out the the cloak, and then I stuff it in my bag so that I remain shirtless. <clears throat> 
just, go, just going for pure vibes. Listen. Because fit hot guys have problems too. Don't look at us. We're not dancing for you. I just keep thinking of Grey from uh, Fairy Tale. Oh my god, yeah. That's actually a song from my girlfriend's oh, favorite. Oh, losing your chart again. My favorite episode is whenever he changes bodies with Lucy and keeps trying to take his clothes off, and Lucy like, and no. Gray's body is like, no! Pulling the shirt back down. Um, would I be able to pick up that... Wait, what cloak did you end up grabbing? Invisibility. 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 Um, I think you said cloak of displacement too, correct? Yeah, that would be for a thousand gold. I can do that. Okay. Do I get a discount for my hair? That is with the discount. She's been given the discount okay, the whole okay. time. Uh, could I inquire about some, uh, winged boots? Boots, you say? Some boots. Winged wings. boots. Boots. Ah, uh, she bad. does have winged boots for 700 gold. <laughs> I'm gonna scoop them up! She also has, she pulls out a, a few different, she also pulls out a few different kinds of boots. She has the boots of speed for 1100. Uh, oh, I wanna... what did the... What does Boots of Speed do? When While you wear these boots, you can use bonus action to click the boots' heels together. If you do, the boots double your walking speed, and any creature that makes an opportunity attack against you has disadvantage on the attack roll. I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think I actually have those very boots in uh, Boulder's Gate for my pal. Yeah. <laughs> the common D&D item. <laughs> well, not common, but like they're one used a lot. Spoulders Gate 3 came up with some of their own unique stuff that I was like, ooh, I'm stealing that for homebrew. Mm. Like, I do like how they gave clothing options specifically for barbarians that boosted them, which is not in normal D&D, and I was like, ooh, that's mm. nice. So, the boots of speed are 1,100. The boots, uh, the winged boots are, well, Jacob already got them, so. Yeah. Uh, 700, you said? 700, that's with the discount. She holds up the boots of speed, and she goes, if no one wants them, she's about to put them away. All right, uh, I'll take the boots of speed. 1,100 gold. Uh-huh. Now back to the rings front. Looking at the rings. Last attunements. You don't have any, you don't have any like, halberds back there, do you? I actually might, dear. Before we go back, we're going to look at halberds. Mm. I don't think those function as straight-up magic items. We'd have to look. <laughs> Let's actually see. Huh. We look at character sheet real quick for that then. Because I know there are magic items that are those. I feel like it's just pulling up weird. Oh, cool. Uh... Are you looking at the Discord videos? I was looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> like scrolling inventory here, like what oh, you might look you for. just like, you just look so stoic looking at. <laughs> so she does. <laughs> My she... cloak is billowing right now. Yeah, okay? just they're very this. focused. <laughs> like I don't know what I'm looking for. So I'm trying uh, to get cool. she does pull out a halberd, and she goes, "If you hit someone with this halberd, they can't heal. It is a halberd of certain death." Mm. A weapon of certain death. Now, see. Uh, yeah, he, so if you want, like, gold wise, how would we. What are we thinking? Oh, for this, this is a little bit fancy with your discount, about 1300. Done. <laughs> Get done. Just yeah, tosses yeah. it to you. Come uh, on. And what did you have Come to on. ask for, Aaron? Oh, uh, two questions as I'm thinking about it. First one, uh, do you want me to keep track of arrow inventory? No, I don't care about that. Unless it's special ammunition. Got it. Um, also, uh, we could, we, we don't have, if, if she doesn't have it here, we don't have to RP, like going all the way back to blacksmith, uh, but a, a shield of either perhaps plus one or plus two. She wouldn't have it, but the other place would. But y'all, we can just say off. You bought that off screen for yeah. shield plus two. That would be eighteen hundred gold. Shield plus one, about nine hundred. Mm. 
eighteen hundred for the plus two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. If I if I'm if I'm down to sword and shield, I'm gonna need that plus two probably. <laughs> okay. And for her, we are gonna go back to rings because I know somebody was curious about rings. I know. I mm. I, I see Cindy just scouring. I, well, I was trying to look. I'm looking for anything. If we're going to the dark, that might help with like. Mm. I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be real dark down there. <laughs> well, I mean, there is just a ring of light. Yeah. Yeah. I think we also have a light cleric as well. Yeah, in the party. So. What? There are a lot of really cool rings. That's she it. goes. She goes. What's your budget, dear, for magic items? I can just show you based on how much you're willing to spend. Well, why don't you tell me your favorite? Your choice. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, she goes, well, my favorite, and she holds out a ring. Just a simple gold ring with a little tiny gem in it. This is a ring of three wishes. It has three of the wish spell in it. Ooh. I don't think you can afford it, though. Ooh. How this... much? How much is it? Three million gold. Oh, oh yeah. No. You ass. Million? <laughs> it's got the wish spell in it three times. No, I, I get it. Just how often do you hear million in a D&D game? Never. Yeah, she goes, but if you're working for something, what's your butt? That's why I asked what your budget is, dear. Uh, or what? Let me about something in the at most, at most, eighteen hundred, two thousand range. I could do that. Hmm. You seem to have the vibe of that you like the wind. I do like the wind. She holds up a ring that she goes. Normally, I charge twenty five hundred for this, but for you, I could do eighteen hundred. Hmm, let me see. Actually, this might be too bad. Hold on. Keys. Hold on. Oh, never mind. That's not what I thought it was. <laughs> so, hold on. I have other ideas. What's this? She holds up. He's like, dude, would you like to be harder to hit with spells? For 1800, she will give you a ring of spell turning. While wearing this ring, you have advantage on saving throws against any spell that targets only you, not an area of effect. In addition, if you roll a 20 on the save and the spell is 7th level or lower, the spell has no effect on you and instead targets the caster. Using the spell slot, spell save DC, attack bonus, and spell casting ability of the caster. I'll take it. Okay, 1800 gold. And best part, it's made of glass. Oh. Done. Me. El, did you have anything you were wanting to look for? Uh, would you happen to have an amulet of health here? Ooh. Let me take a look. I know what that does. But... What the heck is that called again? Amulet of Health. I can't find it in the inventory, but it's part of the 5e. It is there. It should be in the thing. She goes, so do. That would be about 1,400 gold. 1,400 gold for an Amulet of Health? Um, I'll take it. Okay. You're going to be very constitution-heavy sorcerer. <laughs> uh, that was your ring. Was a ring of spell turning. What was that other thing I was thinking about? What is this? How do I find it in the uh, inventory? It should just be able to... Let me go ahead and... I can pop it in your inventory. Okay, thanks. I should be able to. 1400? Yeah. Uh, L? Inventory. Mm. 
Yeah, right there. There you go. It's in your inventory now. Just profess the page. Thanks. I'm about to destroy the chasm. <laughs> so as you guys are... Just a flavor question for this cloak. Can we it just flavor it like it's like sort of, again, those sort of like autumn leaves and the invisibility is like sort of just an it immediately perfectly matches whatever the foliage is that we're around, even if it's not, you know, like necessarily plant life. But if that's kind of the flavor of the invisibility, is that possible? We can do that. Yeah, right. Kind of like that. So that like when I'm wearing it, it's sort of it's just like this, like we can, continuation we can of the flavor. autumn leaves. We can have some flavor. Like in the Ranger's Apprentice books. Oh, I love those books. Every I saw this Same. post that said every millennial and Gen X man has a book that might not necessarily be the greatest when they were a kid that they have a strong affinity with. And it showed two things, Ranger's Apprentice and Del Toro Quest. And I'm like, I've read both of those. <laughs> and I love Del Toro Quest. Leave me alone. It's great. <laughs> it's just a uh, MacGuffin hunt and there's nothing wrong with that. Do, do you, would you happen to have gloves of swimming? I don't really have any gloves, dear. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't know how to swim? Well, wearing armor and swimming is different than wearing no armor and swimming. Mm, not if you're wearing elven chain, it's not. Oh, there's ring that. Or necklace. Let's say you're wearing elven chain, it feels like you're wearing nothing, basically. Ooh. Your chainmail literally wears, according to the way on Deity Beyond, half a pound. Oh. Your chainmail. Oh, wow. Which, if anyone here has worn chainmail, you know it is not half a pound. <laughs> no. Even the aluminum is not half a pound. Yeah, even aluminum chainmail is, like, deceptively heavy. So It's not super heavy, but it is heavier than expected. Yeah. Yeah. So, you guys are... And we're supposed to go... Right, on that note... She pushes a button and the door opens. Bye-bye! And you're all... <laughs> sucked out of the tower and the door closes and relocks to a different route. And the coin that you had disintegrates in your hand. He was nice. Oh, oh wait, no, never mind. What are you going to say? I was going to be like, wait, I forgot to buy potions. But there's an alchemist. We yeah. can do that off screen. Yeah, we can do that off screen. So, now you guys, we're going to behind you the see Gareth. Enjoy your little shopping session. Yes, actually. Wait, who said that? Gareth is walk standing behind you all. Oh. It's time to move. Hi. I bow shallowly. I billow. <laughs> you billow? You gotta stop bowing to him. <laughs> At Just least it's sort of thing I do. No, I, I, but... It's like telling us... Just... So Go ahead. I just like sort of look at Gareth. I like look back at Aaron, and I'm like, "Listen, I appreciate that you do." It. All right, Gareth, Gareth, what's up? Are we it's are we going to, somewhere? Or time, it's time to move. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, so we just loaded up. We're ready to go. So I don't even good. Don't even worry also, about. I love how telling Aaron not to bow is like telling a southern kid, someone who grew up in the south, not to use sir or ma'am. It's like, listen, yeah. we can't help it. We can't help it. It's ingrained in our brains from childhood. It's my dad tried DNA to do that now. to so many people. He's like, stop calling me sir. And they're like, my mom will whoop my ass if I don't call you sir. And he's like, I don't care. Exactly. There are consequences, sir. Please stop. If my dad heard me not say sir to one of the other football coaches or like a teacher, he would have been, he would have been like, would... talk to him right I got now. told off for that. I've yes, called sir. more cats and dogs sir and ma'am than I have humans in my entire life. I refuse. To be fair, this that's true, because the first time Cal laid his head on you, you went, oh, hi, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gareth leads you all to the Undercity. Ooh. Takes you guys about an hour to get there, and you see the Undercity things are not as great as they are in the... Like, even the middle tier of the city is much more resplendent and good. It's, it's dirty, it's dingy. There's a lot of... You're noticing way more half-elves, elves, and... Lizard folk and kobolds down here than there were up top. Up top was mostly dragonborn, tieflings, and high elves. 
and you're noticing a lot more decrepit homes. Gareth just leads you to a door, and he goes, Pay no attention to the proprietor of this establishment. He's a little odd. And you see the sign says, Stan's Stabs. And as you walk in, it is a shop with the rustiest blades you can imagine hanging off the wall. And there's a little kobold man sitting on the head goes, oh, Hello! Stan! He's literally doing this with his fingers. Have you come to buy some stabs? Garrett's like, they're with me. Oh! I don't think so, but thank you. Scary man with mouths full of stabs. I, I, I think I might just pity buy... Uh, no, 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 but like as as you're picking up a sword, I'm like putting it back down. Well, he also goes, "Oh yes," and he picks up a little dagger that's fully rusty. He goes, "Rusty stabs are better than shiny stabs because then you stab, and when you pull out, they get tetanus." I was thinking that, wrong, but also no, maybe no, invest in. I don't want to do that. <sighs> you know, I look back to Ulrich. I think still going. You're you're a paladin, Ulrich. You don't want to stab somebody and... well no but you know I don't want him selling it to anyone else I want to dispose of it properly I just, just no to... he pulls back the dagger you know by my stabs yeah go with go with fire. go with furry stab stab tooth man and Garrus just goes come on oh, ignore him and, and then he goes oh, that's pretty glass <laughs> I trade you for a stab <laughs> the you know what? You know what? Change. You know <laughs> You called it pretty, and that's the first time I heard it. Yeah, yes, here, I'll give you this this tiny little one. Here is a stab, and instead of the knife he's holding, he picks up a Zweihander that's fully rusted. He picks up a rusted Zweihander and hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Now, you hold on to that. He a, carefully a pushes it on top of a shelf that has, the on, that has the only shiny weapons in there also next to it. My steps now have glass. He starts just starts doing this in his own mind, like, completely ignoring the rest of you. <laughs> Garrett just goes, I said not to put... Garrett just goes, <sighs> opens the door. It's kind of cute. The doorway is down here. Do you understand? Bye! Not from that one. Wait, when you come back, I will have more stabs! Maybe we can bring you some. <gasps> Shadow stabs! <laughs> oh, that's true. I guess I could leave, because I, I still I have now two halberds. You give him your old bases. halberd, he would probably just be your. You know what? Do you give him your old halberd? He goes, yeah, for sure. I was gonna say I give him the halberd and the mace. Uh, a smash! He smashes his counter with it to see if it works. Oh, makes a debt, and then he picks up the halberd. New favorite stab. And then he kneels down. I owe my life to you, sir. And you see a little bit of a radiant glow as he accidentally just swore an oath of devotion to a drink. <laughs> 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 oh, I think. I think Draco's gonna go fully in. No, and it's not I'm technically to. Like, uh, Draco, you realize it's technically not to you because you can't swear an oath to a not to certain. But you know what you can swear an oath to is dragons. So by swearing an oath to you, he just swore an oath to Brutus. <laughs> Brutus is like Brutus gets like an inch. Oh my gosh! I have my own paladin. Yeah, don't get any ideas, Brutus. Maybe uh, I can ride. <laughs> could I, maybe I could ride him into battle. Should, should, should I oh, give him a goal no. so that he can start his own adventure? You know what? Actually, I yeah, I'll leave like twenty gold <laughs> with Stan, and I'm just like, listen. Also, the reason he's doing this is because he only oh. has index fingers and thumbs. Oh, you are now the first and the best of the paladins of Brutus the Dragon. You understand that? I will okay. slay many in it's his name. <laughs> okay, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, hold up a minute. Like, yeah, 
if Brutus should need your protection, then then yes. But if not, then just try to make sure everybody around you is safe. Yeah, that's that's okay. like the biggest thing. He's trying to hold the halberd correctly with only index finger, and then he goes, "Wait a minute!" And he uses his palette and, oh, and he regrows his fingers with. I can do heals. How is he? Oh my, oh my god! like a seventh he's, level he's spell. A, he's, it's, a, it's already higher level than me. Yeah. <laughs> That's how strong his devotion is, man. I will. Yeah, right. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Gareth is just like, if you're done it, if you're done entertaining the expendable one. Uh, I, I, I very quickly, I slide the pole bowl like a book about like knights and their noble deeds. <laughs> I will learn. We're just like, st- I will learn. To, this guy. I will. I will learn to read. Regenerate yes, is a seventh level spell. That is one of the highest level spells Let's that Helia it. has. That's like a twentieth level paladin spell. He's like, I don't know how to read. His intelligence stat is five. It, it, it's a it's a picture book. <gasps> you are my two favorite people ever to exist. Three. I like I like I like glass gra- glass man too. Well, this has gone swimmingly. Uh, Gareth is like <laughs> Gareth is just looking really frustrated at the door to the basement. Wendy, do you want me to hold that thing for you? You know, your hands are covered in like rust residue. <laughs> Gareth leads you guys. Don't worry, Gareth. We're coming. Gareth leads you all into the basement, and you see that there is a portal, in fact, open. Lady Bliss told me to put it somewhere where if things got out, no one important would die. Okay, you know what? That's a conversation that we'll have later. When we come Um, back. Right. See, like, you know, and I'm just going to toss this out to you, Gareth. There is fully the woods... Or like a lake, you know. Anyway, fine. We're gonna go through here, but Stan's important. You feel me? He's got oh. a halberd. He's got an oath. He's got a picture book. Right. Fine. Anyway, progress forward. Return with Lady Rena Bliss or information about her. It. And then he, oh, sir, he was just he just called Stan not important. This guy, Gareth no, don't sucks, worry, I'm not sometimes. I'm not gonna bow to him anymore. But he's still getting the sir. Uh... That's what I'm talking about, Aaron. I love a character arc. Okay, listen, <laughs> we're going. <laughs> Jesus. To answer your question, sir, yes. Uh, okay, meanwhile, wait. as you guys progress through this portal, it feels like a long time passes with that Ulrich, a red-haired woman with a celestial presence, appears before you, wearing radiant silver and red armor, wielding a uh, wielding a warhammer. And, uh, I, I, Reba. What, what, what was that last part? wielding a warhammer, and she just looks and she goes, You've been busy, my paladin. Yes, yes, my lady. I take a kneel and I bow my head. She I gently caresses hard. your face and lifts your lifts your chin. And she goes, We're past that, my dear. And then she, Stand, please. And I, I, and I rise and just like, unbelievably happy to like see her again. Because like, just, I always miss her. You're traveling with an interesting group, my dear. Yeah, yeah. I think we've become fast friends. I made them all breakfast, and I think that really helped their mood. You have the kindest of hearts. And that is why I chose you. Hmm. You saved those children. And you will always save others, no matter what is put in front of you. Hmm. There are some in your group who have history with those who are not exactly fans of me, but they are still good people, and the commanders are good people. Hmm. 
I would simply warn you that one among your friends has a dark something they cannot control. Oh. Be something wary. Something that may be trademarked by other things. Not, not necessarily. It's just, it's different. The phrasing that I feel like you're going to use. Anyway, go on. I wasn't going to say that. You'll need, just be careful at night when you take rest. Very well. I'll be careful. Oh, uh, one thing. Uh, we got a quest from this lady, Bliss. I think she said she knew you and that you were friends, old friends. Is that true? I don't want to say something like, oh, uh, you know, since you guys are Her friends, eye slightly twitches and she goes, I am very aware of Lady Edith Bliss. She and my old master go way back. I've told you the story of my ascension. Yes. My past life, it seems, has caught up with me. I fear my old master may be responsible for what's happening here. Yes. Mm. If it is him, you and your friends will need to be at your absolute best. It will be done. Be careful with Lady Edith. I will never say she outright lies, but she will twist the truth in ways to manipulate. Mm. But her daughter is indeed in danger, and if I know you, you are all too keen to rescue the damsel. Anyone who needs help. <laughs> You're a good boy. And you deserve everything I have to offer. Mm. And she simply puts her hand on your head. And then all of you are... She was holding back y'all's teleportation so that she could talk with Ulrich. You all appear in a realm full of... It just feels damp. And there's like a pressure mm. as you enter this realm. More so... Helia, you in particular feel like the entire weight of an ocean is crashing down on you oh. for, for a brief moment. Okay. And you remember. This looks very familiar to a place from your childhood. Okay. Um, is it currently dark here? It's very dark. Okay. There, Immediate can, light. You cast light and you can... But you can see your allies again. And you are, you guys, as you step, you feel liquid. And you are in a vast expanse of what just looks like damp. It's like a swamp. With little spots of island. And you can hear the mo... You can hear the moaning of, like, decrepit creatures in the distance. That's not... Oh, and, quick question. And, sure. It's dark, but is it night? No, it's just dark. This okay. place never has light. There is no sun in this realm. No moon, right. no stars. Okay, because I, I have this thing that's... Uh, it's like a physical trait of my uh, pack. And it shows up in my eyes at night, specifically. So I was just wondering if it's on. It would be the equivalent of night at all times here because there is no sun. Or moon. Oh, okay. So the, my, eyes are, my, my eyes are glowing with a celestial light. Mm -hmm. So in this realm, the That's difference cool. the difference between this and the shaded realm, because there has to be light to have shadow, there's just nothing in the sky here. It's the purest darkness there could ever be. Not a shadow. Just dark. Helia, I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw. Like, as soon as we pop in here, I'm casting light on, like, a little amulet that mm -hmm. I have, and that is a 28. You feel yourself panicking for a moment, and then as soon as you cast light, it's calm, and this water you guys are in is about knee height, and it feels thick and sticky. Ugh. Almost like blood. Gross. I'll, uh, uh, these are new boots. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll bend down. I'll, I'll scoop some up. I am wearing gloves. 
on the on the on the left hand. I'll uh, I'll just kind of scoop some up with my fingers. Is it uh, is it blood? It is not. It is like some kind of goopy material that is like, and you get it close. If you get it close to Helia's light, you can see it's like dark green. And it smells of rot and mold. Could I possibly make a check to identify this substance? You can give me a nature check. My first roll! Yay! I, Aaron I hasn't had reasons to roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah I just, I've just been coasting. Oh, before we went in here, I did actually armor up, so I've got a breastplate on yeah. that's very shiny. I, I imagine that I was, everyone armored up when they, before they came in here. I was going to say, in, in that long waiting period where we're, like, listening to elevator music, uh, while Olark is having, like, a really intense conversation, and we get, like, smooth jazz. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, and it's, it's, it's Mass Effect elevators, too, so they're extra. They take forever. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. Get, like, a solid news bite. There's just just not there's just no Ashley Williams to be space racist while you're waiting. I haven't played Mass Effect. I was thinking uh, of a different <laughs> Ashley Williams. There's a there's a I, a, I didn't know oh, what yeah, space yeah. racism came in here. I'm like there's a, oh there's maybe a character like in Mass Effect. Dead eye racism yeah. She straight up has a line where she says where she's looking at sentient alien species and goes, Man, it's hard to tell the aliens from the animals when she works on a ship full of aliens. Yikes. And it's like, and your character can kind of turn and go, excuse you! <laughs> well, I got a seven nature check. Oh. You don't know what this is, and when you get a closer look at it, though, it seems to be alive, and it, like, rolls off your finger and scurries back into the the entire, and you look down, and the entire, and it's like a miles, you, like, with healers, like, you can see, the first you can see is, like, a little bit away, and there's just like little islands spotting, and you can see silhouettes of creatures, but all you can see is the swamp. And if you look up above you, there is just what look like mountains floating above you. Can we see the end of the swamp? You can't. It's too far in every direction. This is all sorts of un. So, do we know well, which way to go? Would uh, I have any idea? I mean, me it's a, been a long time, give but... Give me a survival check. Okay. Hmm, that's a 14. Hey, L, give me a charisma saving throw. Hey. <laughs> it's 11. Okay, this is not for your murder. This is, you hear a voice. Hello, dear. Welcome home. Please. Oh. Progress. Walk towards me. And you feel urged to walk straight. My palace is near. And I would love to see you. So, Elle will start walking straight as if, like, in a trance. Like, and oh, oh, dear, are you okay? Where are you going, Elle? What's up, Elle? Oh, I think Elle knows where we're going. Cool. Let's see. Yeah, we'll just follow you. Yeah. Something's yeah, yeah, drawing you. Know yeah. Something's drawing you. Something's drawing me. Yes. What's? Um, is that a good thing? Go. Um, I'm not you know, sure. I'll. Can I? Can I like put a put a a hand on Elle's shoulder? try and halt her and be like do you, do you know what it is that's drawing you? I don't know where this accent is going. <laughs> the voices. Session one. It's the accents are going to go everywhere. The voices. Yeah. You don't hear them? No. No. Oh. No. Uh, what, are the vo what are the voices saying? That I'm home. I like look around. Do you feel like home? It does not feel like home, Elle. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. Is uh, can, can, is Elle under... Can I tell if Elle is under some kind of enchantment? She doesn't seem to be compelled, per se, or charmed at all. It's just something. Seem, like her own will is drawing her forward. Okay. Elle also knows... 
who now she has to get to to mm -hmm. get rid of her problem so she knows that's where she has to go regardless yeah she will go there yeah i'll so she'll be like just trust me you can follow me mm. fine we're all fine <laughs> this way <laughs> and she starts walking Flump, 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 I flump. look at the group and I'm just like, we don't really have an, a, another lead to go on at the moment. Did I get anything off that survival check of 14? Um, not a direction, but you can feel all around you malicious presences with malicious intent. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have anywhere to go, but I've been down here before once a long time ago and I don't think sitting still is a good idea either. Well, then let's, uh, I suppose. Definitely. We have one way to go, but let's stay on alert, I suppose. Yeah. Priority, mm. get out of this goop. Damn. <laughs> Aaron Let's... is gonna, like, pull, pull his Like, flying out. above the goo. Yeah. Like, knock an arrow. Like, a little bit of, like, Yeah, a I'll light pull my halberd out. On the bowstring. That's so sick, okay. actually. You pull out. Uh, I. I... I discard the rusty sword. <laughs> <laughs> if there was ever a place. As you yeah. drive it drops it, forever. you actually see something pull it deeper below than you can see. Okay. Walking faster. Just Walking gave something faster. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys are progressing, um, Wendy, give me a whiz perception check. Could I... Not have my perception. Oh, that's a seven. <laughs> uh, I'll let one other person make a perception check. Who volunteers? Please. Okay, Ulrich, Ulrich perception stuck. check. Perception! Too focused. Keeping my billow cape out of this goo. <laughs> well, it's Bill also, is Brutus so is flying above yeah. the goo. He's like, no way I'm touching. It's like, dude, yeah. I am not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Brutus are flying together. Uh, uh, the wings uh, have like twelve gone down a little bit. So as you guys like are walking, um, Ella, you feel the person who's like, "Oh, I should tell you and your friends, and all of you in your minds here, welcome to my valley of defilement." As hands, is that... it, it is on all is of your just... minds. It's just all it's you just a telekinetic. All you hear in your heads, apart from Ella, is. Welcome to my Valley of Defilement. And as that happens, Wendy and Ulrich, you freeze in place. As you look down and there are hands on your legs and they just start pulling up. They're not pulling you down, they pull up. And from out of the goo ah! around all of you, several creatures with like long protruding faces that look like they were once humanoid rise up and they're just like, <coughs> like making gurgling sounds at you. And then from the goop, a large tendril pops up made of the goop. And then we're going to end the session. And next session, you guys are going to start with combat against a group of goop monsters and some corrupted people in the Valley of Defilement. Why does this keep happening to my character? This is my Dark Souls swamp. <laughs> this is my poison swamp. I hope you guys have resistance to poison oh, damage. <laughs> No, I didn't no. get Heroes Beast prepared. <laughs> but I can't be surprised. Yeah. So Ulrich's, mm. or Aaron can't be surprised, but Wendy and uh, Ulrich are very surprised. Wendy's got goopy, dirty, grimy, crummy hands grabbing them. He's, he's got uh, these crap. So with that, that is where we're ending tonight's session. Everyone watching at home, we thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time in the realms of Alavar.